No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. I am your champion. I am your king. <laughs> I came back the biggest card of the year. I only get two picks wrong, and they were picks with my heart, baby. I am back the number one gambler on the show, the Euro under King up five grand and also took the lead in the picks rankings from the little, little doggy Dan boys. How's it going? This is the perfect parlay pursuit. Euro under King. Luke King Dan close. Danny, the Batman Bitman. Luke, how was your night? My night was great. Um, folks, it was Alex's birthday weekend. He turned 27 years old. Woo! He went 11 out of 13 on his picks. He took the lead first place. Dan is trailing him by just one pick for year four with May 9th being the deadline, ladies and gentlemen. Alex and Dan are vying for first place. I'm on their heels, uh, but Alex won $5,000. Let's not bury the lead. If you were in the Patreon, if you were in the open bed sheet, you won alongside him. Max Holloway had a lot to do with it. Alex Pereira had a lot to do with it. We're going to recap UFC 300 on this beautiful break week, and then we're going to give you the full card, main card and prelims for the next UFC fight coming up. It'll be our first looks. It'll be our early predictions. I couldn't even tell you who's fighting at this point. But my brain's all on last weekend. UFC 300. Let me set the tone for everybody a little bit here. So Alex turned 27, like I said, on Monday. It was his birthday weekend. I hopped in the car. Don't tell people my birthday. Dox so much. I'm just doing a generic birthday tax day, you know, April 15th. But uh, it's March 30th. I go... To visit Alex, I drive up, I surprise him. I get there just as the first fight's beginning. Little did I know that this would have been a journey that ended so gloriously uh, with not only entertaining fights, not only spectacular outcomes, but winning bets for both Alex and I managed to break even on the night. We'll see how Dan did. We'll talk all about it. We'll recap the whole card. Um, what, what, Where do we even begin, right? I mean, we got to obviously talk about the highlights first. Alex Pereira. Knocks out Jamal Hill. We troll be certified Alex Prayer. And he was in that beautiful golden betting range of a troll be certified pick that is better than our accuracy percentage, which at, which at this point, we in year four, we are 153 correct troll be certified picks come off a four out of five weekend, 80% accurate. 153 out of 236. That is uh, last week when I checked it was 149 out of 231. That's 65% accurate. It's got to be an improvement from 65%. So we finished last year at 69.5%. This year and last year combined, we got an average of 68%, give or take. Um, Pereira obviously fell into a, a betting, bettable range where the odds were better than that 68% accuracy. So for the fourth week in a row, we came out profitable on those picks that are triple P certified and within the odds. This is boring math talk. Pereira knocked Jamal Hill out. Uh, <laughs> I was blind at that point. I was down all in all. Hate to say it, I was down five hunch. I was on five hunch. Uh, I took some shots on some female dogs, and that's that's always gonna bite you in the ass. But Holly Holm took a shot on her big outstretched odds. Kayla Harrison never made that weight in her life. I was like, yeah, we'll see. But once I saw them in the ring together, I was like, okay, so this is Brock Lesnar versus <laughs> DJ Strongbow. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm gonna go. I'm like, Brock's winning this, so I wasn't surprised to see that one lose. Jan, valiant effort. Can't complain about that shit. I mean. She goes out, wakes up, comes back, drops Wei Lee multiple times. I mean, I, I ain't complaining about that one. Um, so that I had a lot of like, you know, interest investment in in uh Jan for some reason. <laughs> Just big line, no female dog in one yet. And uh that was where I tried to win back some of my earlier losses, went in, lost a little bit more. Down 500. I'm like, okay, what can I do here? Alex Prayer, Alex Prayer by knockout, even money, win it all back, just like that. But our boy Alex over here had a lot more riding on Alex Prayer. Money line took that thousand dollars in winnings from two weeks ago, also posted in the Patreon, and kept it rolling on Alex Pereira. Didn't cash it out, just put the whole thousand dollars on Alex Pereira, like plus 160 or uh, minus 160, and pulls himself away a $600 profit. But that wasn't your only profit of the night. And you made your bones, your money, you put yourself in a no lose situation much, much, much earlier. Um, you threw me your phone at one point. You said, What would you do in this situation? And we picked our hedge out spots pretty wisely. We said, let's let's hedge out on Charles Oliveira. That was you. If you want to tell the people your full parlays that won, uh, you can 
Yeah, so I only had one ticket with Alex Pierre. That was the thousand dollars, a thousand win, uh, six one thousand six hundred and seventy five. Uh, then I had a three pick parlay, hundred dollars on this to win seven twenty nine. Aljamain Sterling, Yuri Prohashka, Max Holloway. Uh, then I had a five pick parlay, fifty bucks to win one thousand five hundred and fifty six dollars. Max Holloway, Armand Saruki, and Yuri Prohashka, Aljamain Sterling, and Money Moicano. Then we had another five pick parlay. This one was instead of Money Moicano. Bobby Green, Sterling, Prohashka, Sarukian, and Holloway. And so, where can people find these parlays? Uh, Patreon.com slash Perfect Parlay Pursuit. I post my parlays in the open bet sheets every week. And every one week. Link, it's uh, one sheet, one link posted to you, DM'd to you in the Patreon every single week. That is our tabs with our picks, with our bets, with the bets that we're putting out. For the Patreon audience that we're betting, and Alex put those parlays in the in the uh, in the Patreon. So all together, I won like three point five k based yeah. on how much I had put out there. Uh, but awesome to have that good of a winning night. What Luke was referencing in hedge out spots, I didn't put this in the open bet sheet because this was my own personal own, own personal war at this time. I uh, put a bet on Charles Oliveira because I had. Armand Sarukian and so many of those bets to where um, I'd have a good, I'd have an opportunity following up with uh, Max Holloway and also um, Alex Pierre. I put Alex Pierre on that one, or maybe I put Jamal Hill just to hedge, but I did Charles Oliveira, Max Holloway, and uh, Jamal or Alex Pierre. I forget which one I did, but I did have some good hedge out opportunities. I wasn't too confident in Gaethje. Didn't really put anything on him. When it came down to that fight, all of those parlays were uh, Max Holloway away from winning. So I didn't hedge on Gaethje, only hedged on uh, Charles Oliveira. And then Max ended up putting on the most dominant performance of the entire card and finished it off with a chef's kiss uh probably the best fight i've ever seen in my life my favorite fighter in the world and alex piera my new up-and-coming favorite fighter uh love both of these guys to death they can do no wrong in my eyes and so we'll give max and alex poetan credit but i just want to say i mean we'd be reminiscent if we didn't bring up this was the most money won on the show it was Alex's weekend. It was the weekend of UFC 300. Uh, his favorite fighter was involved in this payout. And UFC 300, this is the first time that we broke past the 3K mile mark as far as money made. So it was just a, a, a just a whirlwind of really awesome things coming together. So happy for Alex. Uh, never won the perfect parlay, but you know what? You bested us in the money total, and now you are the uh, the official leaderboard of uh, of picks here. So congrats to you. I know you won the perfect parlay. I'll put my asterisk on it. If a fan wants to put an asterisk as well, that's up There's to you. There's no asterisk. So you're going to be people watching the show for the very first time, Dan, and you're going to slander Alex. Like, no. Oh, yeah, I really slandered him. I just gave him, like, five different roses all at once. I know. You were giving me so many man. roses, and then you just dissed me right at the end. It was No, no, no. Well, you know, you know how it is. You can't give it too much. You can't give it too much. Everyone on the show is in a perfect parlay. Everyone on the show, uh, Alex has hit the most recent one in the last four months, and that was the biggest win of the night. That was the win that took you into first place for your four. I mean, it couldn't have been more of a king's plunder. Um, well done. Tip of the hat to you. And, uh, you know, a couple things. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about how we broke down that Max Holloway fight and predicted it pretty much exactly. I mean, yeah. besides the last second knockout, Alex said that Gaethje was going to get retired on the stool. Uh, I said that in the later rounds, round five, Max would be pointing down at the center of the octagon and a very beaten up and battered and bloodied Gaethje would oblige begrudgingly almost. Like, would begr- would oblige, but at that point, wouldn't it be in his best interest? And that's, that's before dishonor. I got to do it. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I mean, from we're, we're I, masters. Saw, I saw this in my mind's eye. I saw, oh, not the finish, but I saw the point. The look on Gaethje's face, the 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 it not being good for him, like I I that was given to me by the amethyst guys. The amethyst, <laughs> the, the eclipse charged the amethyst. I put my hand on the amethyst, and that gave me the pick. That I, I mean, we gotta take some 
belief in the amethyst at this point. So I believe in the amethyst. Um, I'm done with the onyx for now. I'm not even going to bring it on the show, Dan. I think you were right about that. That grounds you. We don't need to be in the ground. We need to be in the fucking clouds. We need to be in the ether, you know, to predict the possibilities and to channel them and to manifest. So anyway, I saw that outcome. I mean, it's clear as day in my head. But when it happened, I mean, the rejoicing. We were already ready to rejoice. We were already ready to rejoice. That yeah. that was like taking a, a, a dynamite that's about to explode and then just throwing it into a pile of more dynamite. That's exactly what it was. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, we're about to watch this firework off. Throw it into all the fireworks. <gasps> Boom! Alex wins all the money. We knew at that point that even if Alex Pereira lost him $1,000, he was he was still been up plenty of money yeah. um, on the night. Wow. So we didn't need to hedge. We didn't need to do anything. We could just sit back, enjoy and then Alex Pereira made it even easier for us. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, way, push, pushing aside Herb Dean on the nut shot. No, nope, oh, yeah. I got this. Bah! The so most cool. badass thing I've ever and seen. It, it's a shame that it's kind of like overshadowed by you know Max's last second knockout. But at the same time, the true hardcores will remember that moment. Pushing aside a ref on a nut shot put on you. I mean, compare that to some of the fighters that's going on these days uh, when, when they receive a foul. Oh, timeout, timeout. No, there's there's no timeout in fights if, if people didn't know. But uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Communist. Like, it's crazy. Yes. That is an entitled communist uh, uh, socialist beggar mentality to go into the UFC and expect there to be some sort of structure that, that is going to help you or it's going to take care of you or look after you. It's like the true people who go into the UFC and take something out of it and actually have a life out of it and have dignity and pride and respect and legacy. These fighters are the ones who just view it as an opportunity, as a portal, as I go in there and everything else is just who gives a fuck. It's what I'm there to do. You know what I mean? And they're there to do something and it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. Right. Love that um, about Alex Pereira. And guys, I mean, did I not also say in the Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje situation that there would be eye pokes and there were eye pokes. Remember, mm. I said, I said, because, but I thought it would be Gaethje, the one doing the eye poking to try to sell the gloves of Trevor Whitman. You know right. what I mean? Speaking of Trevor Whitman, fuck Trevor Whitman. Like are, we all, we all three hate him, right? Yeah. I'm on board. He's in that, for me, he's in the Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, mm. Robert Whitaker, Dustin Poirier, category, Justin Gaethje in this category too, of fighter Tony Ferguson a little bit. But I love Tony, so I'm going to put him, I'm going to not let him get lumped into this. Too positive? No, where it's like the fans will post memes of them like they're eight years old and be like, look at Trevor Whitman smiling at Max and Justin. Wholesome. He's so wholesome. And he just is so happy. First of all... <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Hey, Trevor, give a fuck. You know what I mean? Get, you know who's you know who's a good loser? Losers. That's that's who. Uh, you know who loses well? Losers. You know. Um, so I would rather see Trevor Whitman just I don't know, not smiling. So, um, but know. yeah, Luke, the two fights that were the most important on the biggest card of all time, we. Boiled down to a science. We had them almost exactly correct in our breakdowns of these fights. And, you know, chalk it up to just being the guys that are on the TV the most and the guys that we've had the most tape of. But um, it, it was very easy, especially the Jamal Hill. Like anybody who told you Jamal Hill, unsubscribe to their channel now. Delete any comment you ever put on their video. Unlike them dislike them in fact you gotta go back you gotta go you back. gotta go back all all through all their videos and just <laughs> look at how many times these guys have wronged you because that was the easiest fucking pick in the world alex piera jamal hill and and here's one thing i hate all the revisionists like oh why didn't jamal hill wrestle him since when is Jamal Hill not a fucking wrestle, guys? Jamal Hill has never put a wrestling boot on in his entire life. He has never probably attempted a takedown in the UFC. Not that I've seen. And you're expecting him to take down Alex Pierre, who Jan Blachowicz, strong as fuck, big Polish power, was able to hold down Izzy Adesanya when no one else can do that, right? He held down Izzy Adesanya for five rounds, but he couldn't hold down Alex Pierre for three. So you're going to have Jamal Hill never, never laced him up in his life, Jamal Hill. Now you guys want him to go for a takedown on Alex Pierre. Get the fuck out of here. That was his only path to victory. 
just like Alex Pierre, that was also his only path to victory. But he is just way worse at striking than Alex Pierre is. And he's way worse at striking than Israel Adesanya is. He's not going to get those. If they if those two fight 100 times, Alex Pierre beats him 100 times in the same exact way. Knocks him the fuck out, flatlines him first round every single time. And I think it's even more true, and I'm assuming you're taking this into consideration, that he's coming off of an Achilles tear. He has not had the ample time to train. And the last few opponents he has beaten were old, old as dog shit. And some of the guys that have beaten him, if you look at the Paul Craig win, Paul Craig's getting his ass whooped around town. So his losses don't look great. His wins don't look great. Even his best win, Johnny Walker. Okay, well, Johnny Walker is a fucking numb nuts who <laughs> manages to have that happen to him fucking when he wins and he flops on the thing and it breaks his arm doing the fucking worm. So, yeah, okay, like, you kind of have to put an asterisk on the best win he's got, too. So it's like... Well, Glover's the best win. Glover's I, better I, than I completely Johnny agree. Walker. I mean, it's it was the most negligence... The most negligent bet you could have placed that night would have been on Jamal. Hill. <clears throat> if you bet on Holly Holm, if you bet on Whaley Zhang, if you bet on any of the... Fighters who either were a great, you know, uh, underdog that you thought, oh, I'm going to be on the story. They just shit the bed, Cody Garbrandt, right? Or if they were an outstretched favorite, like Whaley Zhang, I would have more understood it, right? But what I can't understand is the – it's not an unknown. It's not an unknown. He, Jamal told you he was going to strike with him. Jamal has no ability to do anything else. Jamal has an Achilles injury that we all know about. There's no mystery here. The, the mystery would be – what if he's better than Aaron Rodgers and Kobe Bryant and just he comes back and does this amazing thing? Like, that's a mystery that you need plus 400 This fat guy, for. this fat guy is he better was, than Aaron Rodgers and Kobe Bryant who treated their bodies like temples. And it's like, okay, you say, oh, Jamal Hill, he's not that bad at wrestling. Guys, yes, he is. Do you know what sport Jamal Hill played? Basketball. Do you know what season that is? played in yeah it's the same fucking also league. talk about pissing off your boss if you go out and wrestle for the main event of ufc 300 good luck getting quality matchups after that oh oh you're a wrestler now especially uh, as a guy who's never went for a takedown and then all of a sudden now you're like oh here's dude. my chance how pissed would dana be if he's wrestling and and actually like securing takedowns for the main event of ufc yeah. 300 and this is why the ufc knew better than us what to do with UFC 300, right? If you think about it and try to prove me wrong, every fighter on that card was either a person in no position to ever argue with the UFC, right? And gratefully so, like, like you look at Pereira, right? They can call on him to fight in Madison Square Garden twice. Why do you think other, other fighters don't want to do that? Because there's such an you pay New York City tax, you pay to the fucking union of Madison Square Garden, you pay New York State tax, then you pay your federal tax. Like nobody wants to fight in Madison Square Garden. Prayer will. Why? Because he needs to. Because he is from another sport, from another country, and also just has the perspective of that type of person. The perspective of somebody getting scammed out of their mind and kickboxing his whole life. The perspective of somebody living in a jungle, living in you know what I mean? Working your way up to a favela. Like he's got that perspective. It's like when I drive to work and I see guys delivering garbage and I think about me delivering groceries and picking up dog shit in New York city. When I live there, it's like, I'm happy to be going to an air conditioned office on a Monday morning when it's pouring down rain and not being outside and fucking working. You can have that perspective. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking make $600,000. Sure. I won't make 1.05 million, but I'll make 600,000. That goes a long way in fucking Brazil or Connecticut. Let's go. And then you get the opportunity to be the champion headlining UFC 300 in Las Vegas, where you pay no tax. The UFC, people think that UFC loves Conor McGregor. They do, but, and they think they love like Chris Weidman stars like Izzy, right. Who can go and do all these other opportunities, get sponsored by this and get sponsored by that. That's not, that's a different thing. They love them in a different way. Who the UFC really thrives on, what keeps the lights on, are fighters like Pereira, fighters like Yiri, fighters that just will do it and do it on the cheap. You know what I mean? And do it. And I'm not even, I'm not even trying to make a case like, oh, the UFC doesn't pay these guys. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying they do it on the cheap, meaning it's not a bunch of hours in the fucking office calling them and negotiating and renegotiating. And you know what I mean? It's just easy. And uh, they don't let bullshit get in their way. Like Herb Dean tries to stop the fight. They, Justin, but so everybody's either in a position like Wei Li Zhang or Alex Pereira or, or Yiri or Rakic, where they're an international fighter who has no goddamn choice right now. You, you know what I mean? Just like the companies in America treat 
uh, outsourced labor. That's how the, U the UFC does the same thing. Amazon does the same thing, fucking, but we're a lot nicer about it and we make them famous, right? So it's the same thing, same thing, right? So you have those types of fighters and then you have stupid ass fighters like Gaethje, right? Garbrandt, right? <laughs> so and Aljo. And, what? Aljo. Aljo is not stupid. No, you wouldn't fall into that category. Aljo is the biggest um, mystery of what I'm saying because he would actually be the one you could point to and say, what about crybaby Aljo who's always bitching about something and always doing this, and always, you know what I mean? Like, But he fits into a different kind of category of the card where it's like... He's in the same as Usman where Dana White might not have loved him at the time but now looks back on it fondly. And he's like, Aljo was a great champ. Yes, and a lot of that stuff was media, um, you know, guys arguing through the media, right? And then it's, you say something to the media, the media then brings that to Dana White and tells them, he's hearing it out of context, he answers, then they bring it to you. You know what I mean? That's never going to really and work. And just love Sean O'Malley more, we'll it out. What? just because he loves Sean O'Malley more doesn't mean he doesn't love Aljo. You know? He definitely doesn't love Aljo. <laughs> and by the way, the thing is, he does crazy. not love Aljo. <laughs> Yeah, but that is that would be the biggest mystery of like, okay, here's a guy. But I think maybe because he was going up in weight, it was like, okay, we'll be able to get this done. I don't know. You won't miss weight. You won't, I don't. I don't know. I don't really know. That's the biggest mystery right there, because everybody else there to do what because we needed a boss and dumbass on the card, Luke. A what? We needed a boss and dumbass on the card. And Calvin um, Cater was our, our Huckleberry. Yeah. I mean, and you had guys coming off really long layoffs. They have to get in there. They have. They have to fight. Like they need money. You know what I mean? Cater, mm -hmm. package. Um, uh, Holm Harrison, right? So anyway, let, this is just the deeper picture stuff of the building of that card. But to me, biggest loser of the night, Cody Garbrandt. Um, you know, didn't fight excitingly and tapped out. And it's like I'm so sick of seeing these guys tapping so quick. It's like I put up more of a fucking fight at jujitsu classes I pay to attend. I get choked out and against a guy who's a fucking nobody purple belt 55 year old on steroids and you like are tapping when there's medical staff on site you're tapping when like the ufc is going to cover your hospital bills you're tapping when like i don't know i'm not a doctor but like isn't it not that big a deal to get choked out <laughs> <laughs> isn't it kind of fun don't kids do it for fun kidding i would say <laughs> i would say put it up, put it up. There it is. my mom was very paranoid about that when i was a kid she's like you better not be playing the choking game <laughs> don't give me any ideas mom i didn't even know that made you high <laughs> She's like, I saw Ron got choked I out and then ball. fought in the second round yeah yeah no. badass that was i would awesome. say that was a great moment again yeah. overshadowed but who's that i would say the biggest uh, loser oh yeah Jan getting yeah. choked out right. at the end of round one coming back and then uh somebody in my uh in my party was like Shouldn't she not fight? I was like, no, she's fine. She get knocked out. There's no brain damage. She's she's awake, so she's fine. She's good should to go. the ref have stopped it? Yeah. Yes. Should should she have done anything differently? No, you no. Should have. We should not. Herzog, it came old, at the end. Herzog, who you know, I hate Jason Herzog. Uh, he would he, he was negligent there. You hear the clapper. You hear the horn. You should, he should have been already closer than he was when he heard the clapper. And then the horn goes off, and he, there was a one-second delay between him touching her and the horn going off. And that is what caused her to pass out because she wasn't passed out to the bell. If he had just stopped it right then and there, she probably would have been fine because it was a borderline thing anyway. She was, like, kind of getting able to – she was like – I know that feeling. A guy got me in a baseball bat choke. I was actually standing up. He was on his back on the ground in a gi and he hits me with a baseball bat choke like i was going to pass his garden it was just a random ass thing and i it was like this and all of a sudden i'm like still standing up but i'm like in a twilight you know like like uh where harry potter goes at the end and sees dumbledore where it's like a platform nine and three quarters but it's all white like that's where i'm at and i'm like and then then you kind of sink back in and i was still standing up you know what i mean so it's like i was in one of those half states because he let go real quick and i was already and the blood got back to my head real quick i don't know just trying to say that she was in one of those kind of half states and if he was there a second sooner, she wouldn't have been in any kind of half state. She would have been fine, you know. So fault of Herzog. Glad that he cleaned his mess. He cleaned his mess. Hey, if he was the ref for the hallway fight, that would have been a decision, and it wouldn't have been uh, the moment that it was. And, and that, that's why I can't even get mad at my bet on Jan because it's like as somebody who had money on that, and I see, I think I'm about to lose, and then I don't, and then she knocks Waylee's down, and I think I'm going to win, and then she knocks her down again, and I think I might win again. It was like. Still a fun fight to watch, you know, even though she lost. I was like, that was exciting. The ups and the downs, the thinking I was going to win, thinking I was going to lose. It was 
uh, roller like, coaster of a give you a nice little roller coaster. Yeah, and then I won it all back on Pereira, so I got to have that roller coaster again. And it's like, yeah, I didn't deserve to win. It was Alex's night. You know, I didn't need deserve. I didn't need to usurp a bunch of the energy in the room. It's about energy management, you know. And Alex needed the energy that night. So, I think the biggest loser on the night was Jalen Turner. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the walk away, the walk away really got to me. I mean, he's thinking he's thinking that he's Tom Brady and he can work the refs like that. Not, you're not even Kirk Cousins. You're like a you're like a Kyler Murray. Not to put out too many football references here, but like you're a talented prospect who hasn't really done much. You don't get to work the refs like that and just like knock someone down and then walk away. You're not that guy yet. Get on top. If you really feel bad about it, you could establish a dominant position and do tiny little baby fists that make it look like you're doing damage and then get the finish. But like, what what are you doing walking away? And, and I'm tired of this guy's feeling bad about a bullshit. If you feel that bad about it, do what Roy Nelson did and put people in crucifix and just go da, 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 right. like you're saying, Dan. Yeah. You don't have to hurt him all that bad if you if and if and if you feel so morally conflicted by your job, maybe you should fucking quit. That, <laughs> that's that's what I say. You know, it, no, no teachers are going to work like, damn man. Teaching the youth is really like a bad thing to do to someone. Teaching kids how to do math is terrible. No, like I mean, fucking guys, quit. <laughs> I, I can't believe you left this point on the plate for me. Look at Jalen Turner's last victim, Bobby Green. <laughs> he didn't have any problem finishing him off. <laughs> maybe that would have been the one. Maybe that would have been the one to do the walk off. Maybe that would have been the one to get up and. And maybe when you get up off Bobby Green, because fighters have done that before, believe it or not. Fighters have actually been like, like they've let go of a choke and shown the ref he's out. And then the ref looks really stupid, but like the fight does end, you know, or they've gotten up off a knockdown opponent and the guy doesn't get up to follow you. Obviously. Or just drop them on their head like well, dungeons. <laughs> just, yeah, oh, he's out. <laughs> you stop your own fight. Yeah, um, that might have been in his head though. Like, oh shit, my last fight, like I knocked this guy <laughs> clean <laughs> dead. Like my next one, I can't be doing that. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be in your head. Not your job. But you know, I, get it. I get it. I get uh, it. When that completely broke Shalin Turner, it proves what we've kind of had a feeling about all along, which is that he's not a strong-minded person. Weight bully. Anybody who cuts that much weight, exactly. Anybody who is that has that little confidence in themselves that they – and, guys, this is just me explaining the situation for how it is. You know, if, if Jalen Turner is 70 years old, he's going to tell his grandkids – your old granddad, he had a trick, you see? I would starve myself, and then I would dehydrate <laughs> myself, so I had an advantage against smaller men. And and, and, and like, with Grandpa, you're a pussy. Like, that's not – like, what? People did that? Like, that's, And with Money Moicano, like – You put plaster in your gloves too, Grandpa? You put plaster in your gloves? Like, what else did you do? Like, And Moicano, like, he used to be a 45er. So, like, your weight bullying should have been much more of an impact well, that kind of makes Moicano sound like a fucking reformed weight bully, doesn't it? No, he's yeah. he's perfect. He he's just as tall as Max Holloway. He barely made 155 against Dos Anjos. He likes his beer and his steaks, man. He uh, got that on a week that's notice. That. Uh, that's what I'm saying. He's he's pretty. He's way bigger than 155 a week before the fight. Weight bully. Just kidding. I love Moicano. I can't. Moicano is a made man for life with me for his libertarian pro libertarian listen a uh, great moment of the night great moment i mean i mean one of the best moments of the night i would say top four moments of the night mount rushmore moment of my night was his win his come from behind win that had alex's parlay i had him in a parlay at that point i believe and uh he i mean it was a, it was a triumphant come from behind victory the post fight speech was. I wonder how many people uh, looked into that Mises fellow and his. Uh, what do you mean, Mises, you don't already know who he is. Oh, is that the Mises Institute for oh, Libertarians? Yes. Dave Smith talks about it all the time. Same guy. Yes, that's don't. Oh, don't okay, so him. I am smart. Shut up. But yeah, I do wonder you how. Prove many that you're not smart because you listen to Dave Smith. No, I don't. I actually don't. I'm not a fan. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, I wonder how many people actually logged in. And I'm, not that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just well rounded. Little like, mouth on him. Bing, 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 bing. Um, but yeah, Moicano, magnificent. And my favorite part of the night was like two guys 
who were like trying to get performance bonuses for either the prelims or Jalen Turner was like, can we get a bonus for everybody who gets a finish? And Sadiq Yusuf was like, can we get a prelim bonus? And both of those guys got finished. And after, I don't know if you guys watched Dana White in the post fight press conference, he was like, announced the performances of the night. And he was like, and don't worry, everybody who got a finish tonight, like we're also taking care of them. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the exactly. two guys who were asking for that <laughs> Are, are not even involved with that. That's a shame. I love Sadiq Youssef, but it was funny to just see that turn of events. Yeah. No, I love Sadiq Youssef too, but I said it last week. The worst thing you can do to a Sadiq Youssef is to give him attention and money from outside the UFC. I mean, he's not there yet. He, that, that is the worst thing for his career possible. Um, it's sad to say, because like the guys at the, that stage, they need the sponsorship and they need the stuff the most, but that's what you think you need. But you really you need to stay. You need to stay. Justin Gaethje said in an interview before the fight, he's like, "I live alone because I want the championship." And when I'm done with all this, that's when I'll. I'd love to have a wife. I'd love to have a you know a family. He's like, "I'm 33 years old. I'd love to have to have those things in place." Uh, I don't. He's like, "But you know, I'll, I'll enjoy life to the fullest when I'm done with this." That's what he said. And that's but, Justin you know, Gaethje. He's already won a world title. At, you know what I mean? He's already like done it, and he's still doing that. Sidney Houston's out there like. Really? doing bullshit you know but I mean? him okay. and Hanato moicano are doing things for themselves that are setting themselves up for life like those guys have enough personality where they don't even need to fight you know they they have they they I have hate it. i fucking hate you it. know they're like they're like brendan schaub they're they're really cool really talented really funny really smart and they have a career in probably stand up talking like, oh, oh that's your takeaway and that is my takeaway schaub you're the man and i love you Dude. I'm announcing my allegiance to Shab. I don't want. I don't want Shab. I used to be anti Shab, but this cat has found a home. Brendan, don't worry. How big's your house? However, any of size, like any of size. However big Brendan's house is, because that's where I'm bunking up now. I'll tell you what. Um, Moicano needs to stop with the podcast. Um, every fighter needs to stop doing everything except uh, training and doing what like Habib did, doing like George St. Pierre did, you know what I mean? Like stop. It, they already showed you. Ducking uh, fights. I like how Moicano <laughs> strong arms. Everybody Rogan wants now. to be Paige Van Zant now. We got a bunch of men walking around like I'm Paige Van Zant. I'm Paige Van Zant. <laughs> You're not Paige Van Zant. I did like how uh, Moicano strong arm to Rogan. That was nice. He he strong armed him. I'm I'm anti Rogan. I'm pro Shab. Let that be known. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um. All right. Well, there's a lot more to talk about with UC 300. There's uh, the Max Holloway arm and Sarukian fight. Um. Obviously, Armand won, but it, it really just like to me, it's the Justin Gaethje laying face down on the canvas and people like saying like memes like saying how sad they are and like Max Holloway. Or, uh, or sorry, um, Charles Oliveira and losing, and then people saying how sad they are. And all it's just like there's this group of like boy band, like they would otherwise be like Ricky Martin fans. You know what I mean? They otherwise would be like One Direction fans, and like they're UFC fans. Like that's the energy they bring. It's like it's so bad, but uh, it's all because of Hell Wine, dude. It's all because yeah, of Hell right, Wine. Exactly. It's 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 that they, they look at it like it's the WWF and all these personalities and bullshit. Yeah. And I love this guy and da 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 da. The girls' bathroom. They're, it's their mm -hmm. little dolls. They have them on yes. their head, and and Ariel talks to them at night. Hey, hey, hey! You're the king. We love you. Hey, what did Dana say to you? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's mean. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> we'll get revenge on him one day. <laughs> the NBA would love to have you. John Attic, too. He's at a dude. Okay. Biggest. If you guys were starting to let like, out. life get breathed back into the John Attic situation, if you were letting him kind of uh, come up for air a little bit, it's time to push that head back down. Okay. Because he did an unforgivable thing, a second unforgivable thing. Um, you know, I rewatched that lowest common denominator clip of him crying. Uh, and, and it's as bad the third time as it was the second time. It's, just go rewatch it again. I mean, the arrogance, the little like, I'm gonna take. Oh, oh, you'd be mad then, wouldn't you? Like the little like, the little like, you're, he's your girlfriend head shake with the whole like, you know, I can go to the NFL and like we talked about this. Greg Olson's getting replaced by Tom Brady. What's John Attic gonna do at the NFL? Be the fucking ball? 
<laughs> ball washer. <laughs> He's about the height for the ball washer of the NFL. He could be the ball washer. I love the balls on my mouth. He could be a fucking jockstrap stand. Um, <laughs> you can fucking call the Uber around and go say, and say, uh, you know. <laughs> All right, so the thing is, uh, he said at the beginning of the broadcast, he, he pissed on Mike Goldberg's grave purposefully and intentionally. He will tell you, because he's a coward, that, oh, it was homage, it was respect, it was a shout out, it was a... Th-. Shut your fucking little weasel ass up. You did that to piss on his grave. You did what did he do? The last thing he said before UFC 300 began was, here we go. Oh, not cool. Alex, did you know about that? It's probably trademarked. Bro, it was like when the Illuminati or like when like like you've heard of like embarrassment rituals and stuff like that. John know? Cena at the, the, the Oscars. Yes, 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 yes. It was on that level. It was on wow. that level trying to do that. Oh, um, I mean, like it was. It was almost like, like I, I can't even, I can't even begin to try to even put myself in his head to to wonder what was going through it when he uttered those words. I can't even, I can't even get there. I, I am, I'm not that guy, pal. I'm not that type of guy. Never me. Never me. That's all I got to say. Um, so, fuck Boston. Fuck John Anik. Fuck Tyson Chartier. Fuck Tyson Chartier again. Uh, all his fighters catch a beating. All his fighters get embodied. All his fighters get in fucking curb slammed by Aljamain Sterling. A little fucking, a little fucking wiry 135 pounder comes up and picks your boy the fuck up and drops him on his shit. And like I said, open invite whenever uh, the Anak brothers want to get their ass kicked. I will meet them both in the cage anytime they want. Same night, same time. I don't give a fuck. I don't even believe that they're two people. I won't believe it until I see them in the same room. Um, yeah, I would love that handicap match 2v1 under the unified rules and um, still. All for no, sure. no. It's a no rules match. It's how I give up match. They have to say they give up and they have to <laughs> quit. <laughs> Um, it'd be funny if, uh, if like the one twin takes his shirt off, it says PPP and he just punches John in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys spray paint PPP on his chest and fucking lift each other's arms up and he's, yeah, that'd be great. But and anyway, me in the hair, Danik, high five and drive off into the he sunset. He's bald cap up. He's got a sick mohawk. He's like, I was never bald. No, he has long ass hair. Really? Anik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other Anik has long ass hair. And I picture if he does that, we ride out. I'm on the back of his Harley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the back of his Harley. And he's wearing and on the back of his shirt it says, if you're reading this, the bitch fell off. <laughs> <laughs> if you're reading this, my bitch brother fell off. And I <laughs> dude, he he did fall off. All right, more ways than one. So the other thing I wanted to say, uh in regards to uh oh, Tyson Chartier, yeah. That guy, we gotta we gotta go up to Boston one day and just just take a class. You know what I mean? Just see what he's doing. <laughs> That's the worst coach. People have asked me, Luke, what coaches do you like? I'll tell you which coach I don't like. Tyson Jardy. It's the worst coach in all of MMA. Yeah, I'm like, all right. He's like, yo, what are you doing? Why do you? I see your hands are up here, but really, this should be used more like to like, when his punches are coming. You want to kind of parry them into your face. So like, what, this is, this, you've heard of wax on, wax off. This is wax. This is off wax on uh, this is uh, i can't do the joke i don't know this is <laughs> this is some wax wax off. wax off wax on this is wax off wax on <laughs> wax the punches. he's like you're not taking enough punches he's like this guy he, he, he should be hitting you 150 times in a three-round fight before the third round. so you want to parry him into your face like this parry him in and then you can just take all these punches and then that's great that's the boston way Live You've heard the rope dope. We're gonna try the rope dope every time. You you might not be successful, but that's what we're gonna go uh, for. Tyson, I thought the fight was in the cage. There's no ropes. Don't get <laughs> up with the semantics. Okay. <laughs> I I would have loved if John Attic was just like live look at the Chartier corner during the Max Holloway fight, and Max is just piecing him, and he's like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and Dana's like. We got to get this guy on out of here on a stretcher as soon as possible. Here's get the helicopter. I think somebody said they saw Tyson Chartier after the Gaethje Holloway fight. He was reviewing tape with uh, with, uh, with Calvin in the back. He was like, now you see what they're doing here in the last 10 seconds? 
this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Like, look at this. Look at what Gaethje's doing here. Yeah, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Right there. That move. That's what I'm talking about. That, Calvin, this is what you should have been doing in the last fight. Look at this. Gaethje's nose is broken. Your nose is not broken. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, um, man. He's like, Coach, Aljo doesn't like to punch. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Come on, ref. He's not punching my guy enough. <laughs> um, I called the Alex Pereira knockout as well. Um, not on the show or live. I'm standing there. I'm watching the fight take place. I did call it on the show. I called it that he would knock him out. But while this is happening, right, it's me, my brother, my brother's friend, and my uncle. Um, and we're all through watching. And I say, I go, Jamal Hill keeps his right hand notoriously low. It's even lower now because Pereira has gone to the liver uh, three or four times. And it seems that Pereira is using his left hand to target the right side of Jamal Hill's body, our left, looking at him, his liver side. And that's going to get Jamal Hill to drop it. And Pereira sees something right now. And I predict he knocks him out this round. And if not this round, the very beginning of the next one. And as soon as I say that, five seconds later, exactly that happens. And the highlight replay, he goes with the left hook after Jamal Hill has his uh, guard low to pick the body. And everyone's like, dude, Luke, you fucking called that shit. I'm like, <laughs> and it's, it's not, it was not a call. It wasn't a guest. It was me having watched 600 fights a year for four years now, every weekend, multiple times over sometimes and having trained my whole life. And I've decided, I'm like, I should be an MMA coach. Like I'm, I could coach a guy who's way better than Tyson Chardier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Way better than Tyson Chardier, way better than who else could I coach better than? <laughs> Glover no no <laughs> but I mean I, I, I <laughs> as good as Glover I think I proved no why as good as Glover because Glover had months and months and years working with Alex Pereira in one half of a round I see what they're doing and go I see what we're doing here cool per, per, I, I'm instantly up to speed I'm instantly in the game so um I think that that says something you know imagine if I was there in camp with them for all those months I think Henry it might Cerudo. be better than Joshua Fabia you might be like a level above yeah, Joshua. No, no way. <laughs> no way. Joshua Fabia, a smart man looks like a madman like, to a dumb man. And, and the funny thing is, there's a video of him and Diego sitting down, and he's making Diego like sign his, sign these documents, and there's a video camera present, and he's like, and Diego looks right at the camera, and he says, he's never hurt me, he's only ever helped me, he's healed me, and I don't know, like, and, and, and everyone's like, look at this video, man, it's so messed up. Like, I'm like... Doesn't seem like seems like Diego's saying everything's cool. Like, why is everybody getting so worked up about this? I don't understand. He's like, he even said he was like the human punching bag video. Uh, it was not what it looked like, you know. I mean, <laughs> I, I believe I, I take Diego at his word. I take Diego at his word. Well, Man. now Diego is broke Dude. bad on Joshua. So I, I, yeah, I yeah. but it, but I thought the whole point of all right, I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I'm just trying to listen to what Diego is saying, and that's what I believe. Last I heard, he doesn't like Joshua Fabia much anymore. Him chasing me around with that. a knife. It wasn't what it seemed to be. It's disinformation. That you know, knife. Sean Strickland, Sean Strickland <laughs> does half the fucking same shit Joshua Fabia does on a regular basis. And everyone's yeah. cute and funny. All right. He's running around having bottle rocket fights. He's literally taking on Chris Curtis and three other guys at once. He's got four guys fighting them at once. He's He's Which Chris them. Curtis, how bad are you? If you're if 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 Sean Strickland's fighting you and three other guys at the same time, you know? It's really humiliating. In fact, I would, I'd be like, don't post that. I, I would not even get in the cage. I'd be like, no. I'd be like, if three guys, I'm like, if you really want this, I would hope that me and the three guys, one guy grabs the leg, one guy grabs the other leg, I grab the arm, and we just rip him to sh apart. Like, I rip the arm off, you rip the leg off. You know what I mean? I'm like, well. Like old school Las Vegas, Vegas two idea. cars, just pulling somebody limb from limb. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to be able to do that if you're three guys to one. And I would imagine. <laughs> Sean Strickland's a train killer. So were those guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Sean Strickland just picked these guys up off of the streets. He went to Home Depot, picked up three migrants, and said, hey, who wants to fight me? <laughs> All of these guys like Chris Curtis, they spend so much time training with training partners that they, like, develop a style over time that is just, like, uh, sparring and friendly and stuff. And then that's why you have not seen him get a finish in how long. But instead, all his fights are super cordial and respectful and, like, you know what I mean? because he's spending all his time, like, he, he's in the sportsman stage of MMA. You know what I mean? There's stages. And you have to capitalize on the stage that you can attain the title in. It's like it's like trying to have a baby when you're going through menopause. Chris Curtis is trying to have a baby and he's a 60-year-old woman. You know what I mean? Like, that's very much what's happening. It's like so many guys are not at the stage 
yet, and they're out of order. They're getting Chris all Curtis, mixed up. They don't know what to do. Chris Curtis wanted to act like a hardo for pushing Brendan Allen's hug off of him. It's like, then just punch him in the face while he's trying to hug you. Who the fuck cares? Floyd Mayweather is ass. If you really don't want the hug, don't let him hug you. <laughs> I can't let you get too close. <laughs> like, come on. Shout out to Uncle Chael for getting in the Hall of Fame. Whether it be his lowest moment of his career or, you know, his highest, I'm just happy he's there. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> when that was going on, I thought it was his actual Hall of Fame induction. So I was like, why are they sh- showing so much footage of him getting triangle chokes? This is, yeah. uh, this is strange. I get it was a big fight, but what, what's happening here? It was his Hall of Fame induction. No, it was no. The, it was uh, in the fight wing, so that fight That's got Alex, inducted. You guys misunderstand the Hall of Fame. That no, but he is in the Hall of Fame now because of that. Yes, but it was the fight getting inducted into the Hall of well, Fame. That's technically. stupid. If that's how the system goes, if your fight gets into the Hall of Fame, you get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Diego Sanchez and Quay Guida don't deserve it. Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm just saying that that there's a lot of good it? fights. I mean, I would put if it's just about a fight. Duho Choi and Cub Swanson put that in the Hall of Fame. I think it is. A fight. I think it is. It should be, but should Duho Choi be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, no. yeah. The Korean Wonder I, Boy? You know, I would have put Chael, I just would have put Chael in the Pioneers. Uh, I would have too. Because he trained with Randy Couture. He trained with Dan Henderson. He trained with Evan Tanner. He trained with all, it would have been such a great honor to put him in there with all those guys because he, he was a part of building their careers in the training room. And then he also pioneered an era of the sport um, into. And without that, would we, would we even be where we are now? You know, so that's a, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Dan. I don't like the system, but I just have to. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna overwrite and be like, well, Chael's only in there for a fight. He's not in the Hall of Fame. No, to me, I'm like, no, Chael is justifiably and deservingly in the Hall of Fame. Whatever reason they want to give for putting him in there is their reason. He's a Hall of Famer to me for many reasons. You know, my favorite was when he was Where on Pat Lebertard. And he was um, telling him, uh, Pat Lebertard was like, said the quote wrong about slapping Anderson Silva's wife on the ass. And he got like one word wrong. So Chael was like, I never said that. And you'll never find any video of me saying that. You'll never find any soundbite of me saying that. Because he got like one or two words wrong. (laughs) Yeah, that was great. Um, Also, like, I had another point. I lost it. Oh, baseball. Uh, baseball Hall of Fame. Not everybody who's been in the Baseball Hall of Fame has necessarily uh, won a World Series, right? Completely opposite. What are we talking about? You have to. This is an individual fight. That'd be like saying, like, oh, this was a great baseball game, and therefore everybody that's involved in this game. No, no. Is what I'm saying is they take into account, like, I guess I was on a different thought and I didn't share with you. I was thinking, like, a lot of people say if you're not, if you're not a champion, you shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. No, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, because like you don't have to necessarily like have won a Super Bowl or have won a um. Like, you That's can crazy. Like, there should be a ton of non-champions in the UFC Hall of Fame, and not Jim Miller. They not Caitlin Clark, Clark is a all-time great, even though she never won a championship. Who is, Who is? Caitlin Clark? Oh. Goat. Goat. In fact, and honestly, no. I think she's selling herself short going to the Indiana Fever. I think she should uh, hold out for the Detroit Pistons. I think she could uh, really make an impact on that team. I think she's a CIA plant. I think she's a psyop. Might be a plant. She's too tall. She's a psyop. I think that it's com- she's co-opted. Um, and we got to watch her like a hawk. Hawkeye. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, anything else we got to discuss? Bo Nickel. Um, Yuri Prosh is obviously the man. He got a $300,000 bonus. How the fuck did you miss that? We got to keep a Hawkeye on her, Luke. That's what you should have said. Like, she's an Iowa Hawkeye. Did not know that. Because, you know, you guys, like, with your eclipse and your... You didn't know Iowa was the Hawkeyes? It's Ukraine today. It's Gaza tomorrow. You guys are just whatever the news puts in front of your face. You know what I mean? Uh Oh, it's an eclipse. I'll do what I'm supposed to do with the eclipse. I I think I've made my side... I think I've I've made my... I think I've made my side pretty clear on that whole situation a long time before this Mm -hmm. new conflict, Luke. And I did on the podcast... I thought you 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 said you were... You actually actually (laughs) did say that you were going to start watching the WNBA and being a diehard WNBA fan like two seasons ago and then this all happened and i was like did alex like know something like did he know this was about to get like really popular dude no i am just a trend setter i'm a trend maker i am a flavor taster i am the guy who likes if if i like something guarantee in two years all you little fucking losers are gonna hear about it and then start 
jumping on the bandwagon. I've been on Caitlin Clark. I've been on Katie Buckets or Kaylee Buckets, whatever the fuck her name is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, Yuri's the man. Um, obviously, uh, I'm getting a little. I'm, I'm getting. You know, I'm getting tired of Bo Nickel with his like annoyingness, right? Like, very annoying. And I love Bo Nickel, and I love wrestling. And I love He's Penn like State. the greased up deaf guy of the UFC. I love Penn State wrestling. Let me be clear about that. I love Penn State wrestling, not the institution. Um, but, I, you know, I, I just, it's like, does he know that in high school or middle school, the attitude that he is projecting is insufferable and that anybody who, like, didn't tell him that in middle school or high school just didn't want to rock the boat socially, but said it behind his back? You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing the group hates more than, like, the dedicated teacher's pet. You know what I mean? It's like so annoying and it's not fun to be around. And all anybody wants to do in high school or college to that person is get them drunk. That's all they want to do is get them <laughs> drunk, shut them the fuck up, knock them off their fucking kilter. Get them get st- enough with the fucking, yes, we know you have to be home because you have wrestling. You're not allowed to stay at the ice cream stand. We know. Bye. We'll see you because you have wrestling. We know. And you have to get a good night's sleep. We know. We know. We know. Like, it's like one of those kind of things. Like, he finishes the fight. It's like, oh, has to show you. It's like, oh, it's so, like the kid on the wrestling team who gets a pin in this performance. Hey, what? if you're not happy, now I'm not happy. How about that? You just made me not happy. Cool. A kid who got a pin in the second period and and or a tech in the second period instead of getting the pin and throws his headgear on the ground. It's disingenuous, right? Like, yeah, that's it's like it really is. It's like we know. It's like we almost know that you're satisfied with that. And if you're not, then I hate you even more. You know, what yeah. I mean? or, not that I hate you more, but it's like this is an act. Like, yeah, exactly. The kid who doesn't get the music like, and it overplays it, right? Like, wants yeah. to show the coach. He wants to show the coach that he's not happy. Yeah, like, it's that kind of thing, right? It's like. Because it's almost like they're trying to. It's the guy at boot camp that thinks he can just if, if I just do everything right, if I make my bed, if I'm up, if I'm at if I'm at attention, and if I, if I my shirt is spotlessly ironed and every you know what I mean. It's that guy, and he thinks then the the drill sergeants won't be able to mess with me. It's a stupid mentality. They're gonna come in. They're gonna flip your fucking footlocker out up. They're gonna be like, we're on third here. They're gonna fuck with you. You know, it's like the it's like a pledge who thinks that like he's gonna just. Uh, I'm just gonna. You know, it's like no. And no. as you can see from Luke's hat, he has served and he knows that this is the case. Listen, I'm not gonna steal valor, but I'm gonna just say this. I know the personality type, and it's like he's. It's like no, no, no. You're not getting ahead of anything here. You're not. You're not fooling us. It's. It's like if I just say it, then no one else can say it. You know, it's like. Okay. Wow, you've really outsmarted us. We'll just say whatever the fuck we want. How about this? Like, Bo Nickel sucks and should be cut from the UFC. I can just say that. Like, I don't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need to say any. I can just say whatever I want. We can all just say whatever we want. You know. So, I don't trust it. Um, I, you know, of course, there's probably a part of him that wanted to make a bigger splash. I do believe that, but I don't want to see that, right? And if you're gonna do that, make it more interesting. Make it more interesting. Be like. I'm fucking embarrassed with myself that I couldn't get that bum out of here. He was talking yeah. all that shit. I wanted to get him, you know, say, just add some color to it. Add some pizzazz. I had a dream that he jumped over the cage and attacked Hamza. It, it was a sensational. It was a great dream. But Dan, <clears throat> fuck that fight. I want to know how dumb you feel about <laughs> Alexander Rakic with his little baby leg kicks and his little baby no, punches. Why? He did pretty well. It actually wasn't uh, that bad for him. He no had damage. a lot no of damage. really good overhand rights on top of the little baby leg kicks, which were obviously it's doing some damage. Awesome. Um, yeah, Gaethje's leg kicks didn't do anything. I mean, and I know they did, but I'm saying, like, if you're a real fighter, leg kicks don't work on you. That's just that. And Okay, that's true, real. but uh, the right the hands were definitely row. The second fight in a row. The right it's hands over the top were definitely working. Yes. They were landing. He he won the first round, right? It, it finished in the second round. Memory yeah. serves uh, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he won the first what, round. What's good that? What's He's good that? He won the first round. It was a very close and hard to judge. No, he won the first round. He won he the first round. He got destroyed at the end. He almost got finished at the end. Okay, that's that's fine. That's what an all-time great does, which I think Yuri Prost gets finished in the second end round. Up being at the end of his 205 career. Um, I, there's no shame in that. Oh, there really that, isn't. That he fight very a, well. Dan, that fight well. had a combined IQ of 89, and Rakic was only bringing 20 to the table between the two of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? Why? Because he got why? overpowered. <laughs> Overpowering has nothing to do with IQ. Bad body he didn't, he didn't bad, IQ him wincing, to death. He's wincing and he had bad body language. If you're in a fight and you're wincing and you have bad body language, that tells me you lack intelligence. 
Uh, I don't think so. I think he got rocked by one of the strongest pound for pound fighters in the UFC, and he, he folded. Means perfect body, like they all do. They all do. Yeah. Who doesn't fold to Yuri Prochaska? Besides, probably now in the category of all time goat, Alex Poetan. You know, and that's kind of sad, right? Because although it was a great performance and he did everything he could and was supposed to do in that fight, I don't believe that that kind of win over Jamal Hill who scooped up the title at a very advantageous opportunist time against an old man who didn't fight since that day. I don't really think that that is like a quality win. I mean, to me, Jamal Hill is somebody Alex Pereira should have beaten up along the way. Um, I don't really think Jamal Hill is like, a, you know, I think that Jamal Hill would have never beat John Jones. I think Jamal Hill, you know, doesn't beat Pereira, doesn't beat Yeri. I think well, listen, like, Jamal Yuri, Hill was I, a I champ. Jamal, Jamal Hill was a champ. He I'm, took him out. He took out Adesanya, all-time best at middleweight. He took out Sean Strickland. Another champion, and he took out uh, a couple more. Poton, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, to me, the- Jan, Jan was a champion. Took him out. Yeah, he took out no, multiple no, champions. Nobody, like he's nobody, in the uh, Nobody rates Izzy's knockout over Pereira. Like nobody brings it up. Izzy. Yes, they do. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's Izzy. like the whole oh the thing where he puts the arrows into him. Like yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying like, people go like people go. Man, Pereira is crazy. He knocked out Izzy twice. Like they, they never like ever like it's just a complete rewrite. Like nobody, I'm telling you, the Pereira fans do not count that. I don't. I yeah, don't of count. Course. Of course, they wouldn't. I, 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 I don't count it either. I'm kind of like yeah, but okay. So you guys are one and one with the knockouts. He got you with the standing knockout. You got him with the decision. Pereira still nets out positive. Prayer still nets out in the positive. Yeah. I think. I think they need one more. Izzy's got to knock him out one more time or beat him by decision. Pereira knocks him out if they fight again. But here's the thing, boys. I don't want to see that fight for the millionth time. I want to see Pierre versus Tom Aspinall. Heavyweight. I want him to go for 301. Let's go. The first triple crown. Give it to Alex Poa, Tom Pierre. Let's yes. see it. He's proved it. There's and what do we do? We reward fucking dumbass Magomed Ankalaev who doesn't even know his ABCs. What no. the hell are we gonna do? What? Whoa, whoa! Can you tell me how boring the press conference would be between Poetan and I love Poetan and Magomed Ankalaev? How boring would that be? I mean, Tom Aspinall would be just as boring because he'd be trying to suck his cock during the fucking <laughs> during the press conference the entire time. Yeah. The glazing would be unreal. And I don't think Poetan hugs him back and gets his little cheap, especially now that it's out that that's a cheap reach trick because he he said that John Jones denied him of his reach trick, right? The hug. Yeah. So so now everybody knows that's a reach trick. Don't ever fall victim to that again, sir. And also, don't put your belt on the ground because everyone knows that that's a reach trick as well. <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. And, that and was talking. incomprehensible listening to that because it's like the wrestling line. It's like the line on the wrestling mat. You've wrestled. <laughs> Tony is the king of doing something weird and then six months later finding a reason for why he did it. <laughs> like he's the king of jerk store called and they're running out of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, actually, what I did was actually very smart. If you think right, <laughs> and it's honestly it's first concussion syndrome esque symptoms is what that is. Because I had a friend one time who did. Anyway, we'll move on. Uh, got <laughs> Mateus Nicolau, Alex Perez. This is a shit card, top to bottom. There's nothing good about it, but there's money to be won, allegedly. Uh, so we'll see. Well, we'll Mar McMahon is on it, Luke. What about Mar McMahon? Feeling uh, hot, hot, hot. She's a Mar McMahon. <laughs> um, all right, so I got a little bit of a inside info here. I follow Lando Venata on Instagram, and he so not that inside at all. Yeah, well, he was through <laughs> from this card. He was originally supposed to fight James Lion Top, 14 and 2, 12 fight win streak, young 24 year old up and comer. And uh, it seems like Venata, I don't know if he's got some kind of injury, but I did see that he posted that he was doing like roof inspections in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he said in the post, not going to quit fighting forever, just taking a little break, trying something new to try life's experiences and get some new experiences so that tells me that this kid lion top who was on the card against gabe green tells me he's pretty fucking good um because lando Venado would rather be a roofer than fight him and <laughs> he lives and guys he lives in new mexico and it's fucking almost from 
Can you imagine being a roofer in fucking New Mexico in the spring summer months? It is hell. But he'd still rather do that than fight James Liontop. So tells me Liontop is a lion that will be on top in his fight. We'll get to that later. Um, that's the only really, you know. What, what else is there to talk about with this card? Like, is there anything? Hold on, that's Lando, Lando Venato, your boy with denying the fight. Lando Venato was originally booked with James Liontop. He withdrew, and I just saw on his Instagram that he is working for a roofing company now. So I'm trying to say, okay. in New Mexico, almost May. All right, Gabe Green is a, a welterweight, but I guess he's going down. Yeah, 155. So there's some interesting fights on here. You know, um, I also saw that Dontel Mays is fighting Kyo Machado, and I think Dontel Mays is like the favorite or just a very slight dog. He's a favorite. Uh, he's a favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got six losses. Uh, so I think there's some stuff we can do here. I think there's some stuff we can do here. Um, we'll break down this card. Ooh. Main card and prelims, free find people. What's, what's your statement about your boy, your star boy withdrawing from fight? Tuck and tail, cowardice. I already made it. I said, I, no, I'm not saying it's not cowardice. It's just like it tells me something. Which he already I, lost to this guy. He doesn't want to fight him again. Is that what it tells you? And that he knows he's good? <laughs> that the UFC offered him this fight and he said, I'm going to figure out a new, another way to make money because the UFC, you know what they do, right? Like they'll like offer you a fight. If you say no, then they stall you out. They will not be offering I'm going to try to fight Kai Car France and his F word team <laughs> that, instead of this. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, direct quote. Uh, yeah. Is Manal Cap on this? No, he's not. He he's was supposed it. to be. No, yeah, but he's headlining, I think, against Kai Car France. Who, Manel Cap? I think Wolf actually, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Manel Cap no. this. Um, Mateus Nicolaus taking on Alex Perez. Alex Perez, I can't stand uh, this guy. You know, he reminds me too much of Ray Berg. Um, <laughs> he trains with Carlos Sparza. Um, so or reason, Ray Berg. Ray Berg. <laughs> um, you know, Nicolau, he lost to Brandon Roy Valley a year ago. He got knocked out. I'm taking Nicolau here. The odds are great for me in this situation. Um I don't believe in Alex Perez or Timo Yama. That's just how it, how it's gonna. Yeah, and I don't give a fuck how good he looked against Mohamed Makayev. I don't. And let me say it again. I don't give a fuck how good he looked against Mohamed Makayev. I'm taking Mateus Nikolaou and I'm taking him emphatically. Mohamed Makayev officially stings. No, Luke he doesn't. Said stink. It. He fights to the level of his opponent. I was about to say that. Well. That's what you always say. Luke says he fights to the level of his opponent. I think that is a bad thing to do, and I think that bad fighters do that, and not good ones. Um, I think Mateus Nicolau proves how bad Muhammad Makayev is and submits Alex Perez in the first round in this fight. He's coming off short notice. He gets subbed a lot. He gets subbed a lot in the first round. I think Mateus Nicolau is the guy to do it. Um, I don't even remember the fight between Makayev and Alex Perez. So that tells me that it wasn't all that great. Um, I like Nick Lau here. I think he's very defensively sound. He likes to circle a lot. He's going to be circling around that cage. He's not going to let the takedown come. And if even if it does come his way, I feel like he's going to be able to sprawl his way to safety and is going to be a better striker and really just more mean. He's really looking more to uh, to get a finish than Alex Perez is. So I like the favorite here. I like Nick Lau. Triple P certify. <laughs> Next up, we got Ryan Span versus Bogdan, Bogdan Guskov. For me, Ryan Span sucks. I think Ryan Span is terrible. He lost Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith sucks. Um, I think Bogdan looks like Anthony Smith. So what's that <laughs> tell me? Bogdan's going to beat him because he looks like Anthony Smith. So how could he not? Uh, Dan, what do you think about this one? I know you're a Span man yourself. I like Span, but at the same time, the line is giving me it's giving me the creeps. I don't like Span uh, so much as a favorite here. Um, you, you give me this dog who's an up-and-comer. You know, Span, he kind of put me off when he said that he wasn't training. You know, at first I was cool with it. I was like, oh, man, he's so talented that he's winning fights and he's not even training. Now, in my older age, I kind of think, all right, he's not training and he's not getting any younger. 
Uh, so well, he's going to be training more in his older age. I don't think so. Uh, I think the up and comer with the underdog odds will get the win. I'm not crazy about it, to be honest. This is more of a learn fight for me. I want to learn about this, uh, uh, you know, this young up and coming underdog here more than anything. But um, yeah, I'll take the dog in this matchup, but really more, more cautious than I normally would be. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Because Ryan Spann, he's got a great gym behind him, but hasn't been able to have kind of like the heartiness that I look for. Sometimes he he's throwing, he's wrestling in positions where there's too much space. And his body type, he's got to be more like Aljo. He's got to be more smothering. He's got to be more sticking to people like glue, uh, dragging him. Mo Moicano has this style, right? And Moicano has that kind of frame. Moicano has a frame that like can't take a fucking punch that well. Spans the same way. Skin too tight to the chin. Jawline not uh, rounded and framed. Not enough neck, not enough traps. Not enough ass, uh, not enough uh, cranium, not enough dome, you know? So I think that he uh, is not as hardy as Guskov. Luke wants Ryan Spann to give him a little bit more ass and dome. <laughs> That's all I got from that. <laughs> ass and more dome. But, you know, <laughs> I like guys you know, that are built, that are built um, to withstand the car accident that is going to happen in there. And I think Guskov can. Drew Dober. I picked Gustav over uh, Ozdemir because I thought kind of the same kind of thing. But Ozdemir is a degree heartier than Span, you could probably say, right? I mean, just in terms of, like, thick-headedness. Um, but Gustav showed who he is in the Puaga fight, shows he can dispatch a low-level guy like that. That confidence can take him far in this. Um, hmm. Word up. I'm going to go with Gustav. Yo, uh, quick question. Are the bird sounds real? Because I've been hearing birds. Real, man, and that's we can never do the show this early again. Um, it's now that it's spring. Spring is no. Fun. I think no it's good more bird. ASMR. No more birds. I canceled them out. They're gone. They're gone. I think it's good ASMR for for the listeners. I, I think they'll it, like that. It's, it's it gives a peaceful vibe to the background. I don't want a peaceful vibe. Why They're gone. Have... You will hear no more birds. I took them out. I killed them all. You brought the cat in. That's all you needed to they're, do. They're your birds. They were Dan's birds, yes. For my birds, too. I, no, it's coming from my end, too. Okay. No, well, yeah. you left, and I still heard them. So I was, I, I assumed they were Dan's, but I, I wanted to know if it was real or if it was like something going on. Like, some my window is open. Uh, I do have birds. I do enjoy spring and summer. They are my favorite months. You're uh, also a cheat ski. I know you turned the air conditioning off fucking probably a week ago. And why would the hold on you dumb fuck he turn it back on until August, dude, he's going to make his wife sweat. In that the, the air conditioning wasn't on a week ago or two weeks ago or three weeks ago. He just hasn't turned on the air for the first time. Learn how, look, I, learn go how heat, I go from heat to AC, baby heat to AC. Yeah. But to, to, all right. To insinuate that he might've had the air on last week when it was cooler and not have it on now is, Asinine. We're no, having asinine. air problems. I'll be honest. We're having air problems. When I said the uh, air, get the, the, air the air conditioning. Heat is a condition. Cool is a condition. When you condition the air, you can do it both ways. It goes both ways. I'll conditionally discharge you from this conversation. Um, forget about it. We got Kareen Silva. We got Ariane Lipitsky. The, the people's main event, honestly. Um, Dan, yeah. I personally, I think... Kareen Silva feeds Arian Lipitsky her first submission loss. And I'm loving the odds on Karen Silva right here coming in as a dog. She's never seen the third round except for one time in um, before she got to the UFC. And, uh, she, you know, she's been submitted before knee bar, which is something Arian Lipitsky is pretty good at, which gives me a little cause to pause. Uh, but she just avenged that Marina Morose loss. And I think she's going to take take uh, personal grievance with the fact that this girl is a knee bar girl and she's been knee barred in the past. So give me Karen Silva. And I love her by submission in this fight, but she's a dog. Take her at the dog odds. She's going to out grapple Arian Lipitsky. Arian Lipitsky has some flashy subs here and there, but I don't think she's there for the wear and tear, especially somebody as stocky and strong as a Karen Silva. 
I'm all in on what you're preaching, Cheetah King. I don't believe in the violence queen, Ariane Lipitsky. Um, you know, she's taken decisions and splits against girls that she should probably be finishing if her nickname actually lived up to the hype. I think that's more like Karina Silva, okay? Girl with a big old head can take some damage. No disrespect to the head comment. I mean, in all the best aspects of the game, of the sport, um, she's actually finishing ladies. You know, she's on, what, three, four, five-fight win streak um, within the UFC, getting the finishes. Uh, I think she's more aggressive, not as, um, you know, not as calculating and tentative, which I think is actually a plus in women's MMA. So I like me some Karina Silva. I'm not gonna, you know, go by go by submission here. Take the straight money line. She's already a dog at plus one twenty. I was also surprised by the line. Gives me a little bit cause to pause, but at the same time, you know, Vegas gets it wrong time and time again. So give me Karina Silva. I like Karina Silva too, which will be certified Karina Silva. Um, Arian Lipitsky looks great lately. Um, who would have thought coming off that knockout, she would rebound with as many wins, but. It comes down to hardiness. It comes down to, you know, um, the strength factor. It comes down to, I think, who will have top position more. I think this will be Silva. And also, I think she's just got more stopping power. Um, I think she's on a bit of a streak. And I, you know, you said, uh, what would you say? That, uh, yeah, you just said something that important. She has a big head. She has a bunch of finishes. No. Uh, I lo- oh, Sean Strickland. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, it has nothing to do with what you said. Casey O'Neill. <laughs> that's uh, Lipitsky's last win. Casey O'Neill. She finished her. She got an arm bar three months ago. I have it on good authority from Sean Strickland that he said Casey O'Neill is crying all the time in her car outside of Extreme Couture. Um, unless he meant Jessica Rose Clark. I don't know who he was talking about. It might have been Casey O'Neill if she trains there. But I think she's on her way out. I don't think Casey O'Neill wants smoke anymore. So... You know, a half in, half out case. You nearly armbar submission three months ago. That's going to be the unwarranted confidence. It's going to get you in trouble with Korean Silva. Uh, love the odds. Love the line. I don't know why you're scared off. Like, if, if it's plus 115 and. Silva well, I think he's scared, scared off because wait, wait, we've seen. It would yeah, seem let's, obvious let's, that let's Silva would this out, ready? The you, 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 bet, you bet Lipinski at minus 140. Vegas takes your minus 140. I bet $100 on Silva at plus 115. So I'm going to win 215 back. You're going to lose 170, right? Uh, that's called a VIG. He's saying he doesn't understand the odds because we've seen a girl like Ariane Lipitsky lose in the UFC before, but we haven't seen Kareem Silva lose, and mm-hmm. she's been on a tear and finishing everybody in the first and second round. And her last so name is Silva. Like all these things, it that doesn't add make up sense. Like the a the line, place, a yeah. commonplace fan would be like, "Oh, Silva would win." You got a UFC. You got a, a girl who's undefeated in the UFC versus a girl who isn't undefeated in the UFC. Finishes. Yeah, finishing chicks. Yeah, and you got a girl who's a Muay Thai girl versus a jiu-jitsu queen. But that's what I'm saying. They want people to look at this and bet more money on the wrong choice. It's a trick. It's a trap which is Kareem Silva, which is why he's saying he's scared. He's like, oh, Kareem Silva so, should obviously dude, be a favorite. I'm going to put a bunch of money. Dog. It's, they want to scare people off of her and make people more inclined psychologically to bet on the favorite, minus 170. So that what that means is that like now everyone's shelling out their money on the loser. So Vegas takes all that chalk. They keep all that. And, and only a couple smart guys like us bet on the underdog. And they We are that. smart. We're very smart. Now very that you mention it, you're making a lot of sense. I am quite it's smart. It's called a trap line. It's a classic trap line. You guys got to read Billy Walter's book. Billy yeah. Swift. Uh, okay. Jehonata Deniz. I wonder if any of you has any relation to Mateusz Deniz. Uh, Adam Marcelo Garcia Academy. Um, John, yo, how do how would you guys say this? J H in in Portuguese. Uh, Yonata, Yonata, Yonata. Then is or is it Ranata? Because if R is H, then is H R. Jonathan. I know H is R, so R it's is H. Jonathan in Portuguese. Jonathan. 
Okay, Jonathan Davis, uh, six and <laughs> oh, uh, six and oh, all knockouts coming off the contender series, first round knockout against a seven and one competitor. Um, he's gonna be taking on Austin Lane now. You know, I had high expectations for Austin Lane when he fought uh, Justin Toffa the first time, he got that unintentional eye poke. That was Justin, that was Jacksonville, Florida training, Jacksonville, Florida fighting, Jacksonville Jaguar. Austin Lane fighting in Jacksonville against Justin Tapa. He was going to win that fight nine months ago. He got in there, you know, two months later and got knocked out. But on that night, when there was a no contest, he was going to win that night. Um, but he's four years older. He's going to uh, not really have many physical attributes over Janez here. So I don't like the line with a debutante. Debutantes lose at a rate of like 65%. But I'm going to go with Diniz for the pick, minus 250. I think he's going to make it look minus 250. But going into this, we have no reason to we have no reason to shell out that kind of money. Um, there's there's nothing in what you're seeing that warrants that. But it will be him who's getting his hand raised, and I will take him. Let me put on my tinfoil hat and say that. The UFC is looking to put some good graces towards the country of Brazil right before their 301 card. Uh, this is one week before UFC 301 in Brazil. This is a undefeated prospect uh, going up against Austin Lane. I don't think this is a main card fight because of Austin Lane. Um, so I like this uh, this up and comer against a guy who listen. When it's the UFC debutant, I feel like. You know, they get beaten down because they lose a little bit of juice going into rounds two and three, certainly three. Um, but when it's heavyweight, you don't got to worry about that because the other guy is tired too. And Austin Lane is not a guy to capitalize on some mistakes, all right? So let's take the prospect who's shown nothing but good things and uh, a Brazilian going into UFC 301 in Brazil. It all makes sense to me. I'm going to take the favorite. I'm going to take the prospect. I'm going to take the hot Brazilian. Let's go. Easy pick. Free space on the bingo card. Okay, so I'm getting news yes, I'm from gonna, April. Uh, 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 uh. Go ahead, Alex. I got breaking <laughs> news. You guys want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. A fight between this isn't that breaking. It came out April eighth, but with the UFC, it came out. It's almost a week old, but I think with UFC three hundred, a lot of people haven't really uh, reported on this. Um, Michelle Pereira's opponent Mahmoud Muradov pulls out with illness, so um, one of the fights, at least on UFC three hundred one, is not going to take place. Oh, sorry, he's got a replacement opponent already. Never mind. I was trying to find a conspiracy angle with you there, Dan, and say that maybe one of these fights on uh, UFC three hundred one dropped off, and they're going to get in his ear and say. Knock out Austin Lane and fucking call to be on UFC 301. We'll put you there if you get out of this fight clean. You know what I mean? Some backroom whisper um, to the trainer. But it looks like UFC 301 has 14 fights, and uh, that seems like too, too many to me. So, All right. Yeah, well, I'm going with Jonathan. Um, he's a former glory kickboxer. He's fought the highest level in glory, Rico Ver uh, Verhoeven. He's like one of the best in glory doesn't have too many losses in his career um, and has a fuck ton of wins. I'm going to go with uh, Jonathan here. I just think that Austin Lane's only path to victory is the striking. And although he is big and formidable, he's not very refined as a striker and has gotten by off of a lot of athleticism. And that's not going to work against more refined striker as we've seen with guys like, uh, you know, what's the, the Rosenstruck? Like Rosenstruck can knock out guys who are kind of just strong, powerful dudes just because, I mean, unless it's Derek Lewis. But besides the point, we're going with Jonathan. As per our uh, colleague Farah Hanoon at UFC News Alerts, we have a new opponent, as Luke alluded to, uh, Mahmoud Muradov out, Michelle Pereira now facing Iho Portier at UFC 301. I'm going to use the facilities. I'll be right back. See you folks in a sec. Yeah, and uh, Potier obviously beat up on Robert Bryzak. Looked really good doing that. A guy that Dan really was high on and talked to us and she'll be certifying. Um, before that, had that epic fight with Bellato. I mean, this is a more dangerous fight for Pereira, no doubt. No doubt. 
All right. Well, let's focus on the task at hand. We got Jonathan Pierce versus David Onama. Word to your mama. Luke, who do you got for this one? Yeah, it's hard to pick against JSP, but um, it's hard to pick David Onama, right? That's kind of the thing here. It's hard to pick against JSP. Um, it was hard to pick against him even in you Anderson Brito. I think we, I think I picked him in the Anderson Brito fight. He lost that. Um, didn't. You know, he, he has a win over C-Rod, Christian Rodriguez, um, who was 7-0 at the time. I believe that's Christian Rodriguez's only loss, and he's looked spectacular lately. Um, this is a really good fight, actually. This is, like, the best fight on the card, I think. Um, this is my main event. Uh, really good fight. Want to take a lot of learnings from this one. Interesting to know that JSP is taller than Unama. I think I kind of, in my mind, see him as the bigger guy. Uh, but he will have a three-inch reach advantage. He's coming off that beautiful knockout win of Gabriel Santos. Before that was obviously the... Uh, embarrassing loss to Nate Landwehr, where he kind of gassed out uh, there. And uh, some, you know, hard to say you quit against Nate Landwehr. The guy runs his marathon track fucking star. Um, best cardio, iron will. You almost want to give him a pass there. And then his only other loss is against Mason Jones' um, decision two and a half years ago. So let me just, let me just see what the amethyst tells me. Amethyst is telling me JSP. I'm going to go with JSP to rebound off of a loss and to withstand the very skillful and aggressive offense of David Unama. I think that JSP is just... I don't know. I don't think he's... <sighs> the Amethyst doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm going with David Unama here. I'm going with David Unama here. Both of these guys known to gas, usually that would lead me to um, <clears throat> lean toward the grappler in this, which is Jonathan Pierce, because, uh, you know, once people get more tired, they're a lot easier to take down. But I feel like the physical attributes of David Onama are going to be able to keep Jonathan Pierce off him, even when he's tired. And Jonathan Pierce gasses as well. Like Jonathan Pierce gasses in almost every fight I've seen him in. But if you get him into the, you know, here's what I'm thinking. Right, David Nam has pretty good jujitsu too. He's got great striking and he's got good jujitsu. I think he's the finisher here. But he's a cuck. What? He he let uh Dwayne the Rock Johnson buy him a house. No, that's not that's Demba Garimbo. Wrong guy. Uh, Come on. It's the other guy from Uganda in the UFC. Um, no, David Anama is a Chad. I like David Anama. Um, he's still fighting out of glory. How did they just kick? Did they kick Kraus to the curb at glory? No, they got um. Who's the who's the fighter that we're high on now? He's now running glory. I think. Uh, shoot, he's the guy that's like not super talented, but has good game plans. He wins fights. He was on. A fight a, a couple cards ago, not too long ago. Trey Ogden. Trey Ogden. I think Trey Ogden's running glory now. Really? As of yeah. topology, it says the James Krause is still the head guy there. Well, listen, don't. Did he beat the charge? <laughs> he might have beat the charges. We don't know. I, I don't know any. Details. What murder? <laughs> <laughs> what was that guy? Was that meme? What gambling? This is a coffee shop. <laughs> <That guy. laughs> yeah, yeah. That's this is MMA gym. Um, <laughs> James Charles. This is an MMA gym. What gambling? <laughs> Words uh, of my you. mama. I'll go with David Onama. Usually, I lean the grappler in a fight where two guys fade, but I just think David Onama's physical attributes are going to stand the test of time. As long as he doesn't throw 130 punches in the first round, I think he, I, I think he will be able to last the three rounds a lot better than JSP. Why am I not seeing odds on this? Is my question. Needs my odds. Uh, it's a relatively new fight, I think. Doesn't matter what the odds are. Matters what's going to happen. All right. Uh, I guess. I, I guess I'm settling on. Here's my thing. I, I think David Adama finish only is a really good, a really good bet. I think Jonathan Pierce has one path to victory here, and it's by decision. I don't think Jonathan Pierce has the jujitsu skills to get. David and I'm out of there. Even if he's gassed, I think he'll stall his way out to a decision in the last round. But no, dude, with the refing or with the judging in the apex, like even if JSP holds him down for four and a half minutes, if David Onama lands 
no. a three piece combination that like he does stumbles it in round, one, round three and only loses round two. That's what I'm trying to say here. So I think David Onama wins by finish or Jonathan Pierce wins by decision. I'm going to pick David Onama because I love James Krause. All right, let's move on. Dude, I swear I've been hearing like missiles go over my head all day long. I just heard a plane or something go by. It might have been that. But once oh, no, we I'm hit our three Patreon, hours, four gonna, hours away from you. <laughs> I am four hours away from you. I didn't think a plane going over your head would. Uh... It was through my speaker, probably. No, You're wearing headphones. No. You fucking asshole. All right. Tim means Uros Medik. Wait, hold on. Got to give my pick. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to not triple P certify this. I'm going to go with JSP here. Um, David Onama is, I'm not going to say he's a raw fighter, but I don't think he's as refined as we would get with a JSP. I think his striking is a little bit underrated uh, as far as JSP. I think his chin is granite. Um, I think if it goes to decision, honestly, the bet that Luke proposed is pretty good to me. Uh, decision JSP finish uh, to David Onama. Uh, I just like the grappling here. I think he's a tough son of a bitch. He will not be finished via any submission. And again, I think his chit is pretty rock solid. I think it's going to be a tough out um, for David Onama. So, yeah. Give me, uh, give me JSP, and by the way, uh, a protege of someone that's been on our show. So we got to show a little bit of love to that. Who? Santino DeFranco. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, fight ready MMA. Okay, awesome. I love Santino. Um... So next fight, this next fight's gonna really kick ass, guys. This fight is Tim Means versus Urus Medik, the dentist versus the dirty bird. Um, the easy. medic. Um, you know, Tim Means is definitely gonna lose. It's Urus Medik all day. You could only get me to bet on Tim Means if he was plus 800,000. Uh, wait, what am I saying? I forgot that he fucking already proved me wrong last time he fought and beat up on Andre Filo. I picked against Tim Means then. Tim Means then, you guys didn't. Um, Andre Filo's. So bad. Yeah, I'm going with Urus Medik. Tamines has 12 losses. That'll be my reason why. Uh, you know, I mean, Urus Medik is 30 years old. Tamines is, let's see how old Tamines is. 40, 10 year age gap. I will be going with Urus Medik here. You can never talk me out of it, not in a million years. You could, Tamines could literally do the best pre fight interview of all time and be like, I am, like, he can sound so convincing. And I would be like, that's a crazy person. He's 40. I'm betting on 30 year old. Tim Means is going to kick him in the balls, poke him in the eye, make this a dirty fight. Tim Means is going to win this fight by hook or by crook. Guaranteed the dirty bird will rise again. I mean, prove me wrong. Isn't he a. I always think he's a Pittsburgh guy, but isn't he from like California? He's from Arizona, I think. Oklahoma. He was born in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's right. That's right. But like Oklahoma. And Pittsburgh are like the same like gritty type of like oil, steel, steel and oil, blood, steel and oil and guns, right? Isn't that a book or something? No, it's, uh, blood, uh, guts, and guns. guns. No, it's it's guns, <laughs> steel, and germs, or something like that. Guns, steel, and germs. That that's all <laughs> Oklahoma and uh, <laughs> and Pittsburgh have. Um, but anywho. I'm going to go with the Dirty Bird here. This isn't the smartest pick. It's not the best pick, but it's the right pick. Uh, Euros Medik has no heart, no heart at all. Origami is a great fighter, but, I mean, he absolutely wrecked. He absolutely wrecked Euros Medik on three days' notice, and it showed no, no, like, care in the world for Euros Medik's family. Didn't care. Didn't care how embarrassed he made him look. Euros Medik is going to get smoked by Tim Means. Tim Means is going to win this. Knockout or submission. This doesn't see the bell. This doesn't yeah. see the final bell. This is the, I just won over three and a half grand. And so I'm going to pick my favorite old age fighter because I don't care if I lose a couple hundred dollars pick. Uh, the actual pick is Euros Medik, uh, Medice, uh, very talented kickboxer, southpaw. 
he's going to be giving Tim Beans, Tim Beans, Tim Means a a lot of trouble to deal with, whether it's the head kick, the lead kick, or the straight left hand, um, or the elbows. I mean, Euros Medic is a well-rounded fighter. He's going to be throwing all all the limbs at him. I don't know how many limbs there are. I was going to say nine. I was going to guess nine, but I didn't want to uh, prove to be a fool. But all the limbs that are available in a MMA fight will be available to Euros Medic, and I trust him trust him to employ them well. So um, I'm going to go with the favorite, the young gun, the guy who's not going to get taken down by a high school wrestling coach and who's going to uh, put the hammer down on the old dirty bird and hey i'm a fan as well but hey this former wrestling coach would take down a lot of guys in the ufc i guarantee that just not euros medic so oh, probably probably our probably next not. fight actually will be on the patreon please like yeah, and subscribe oh, on this youtube video prediction. that helps us out a great amount but more importantly sign up for the patreon which is where we will be at our next moment we're doing the full card. This is the uh, early predictions. Actually, this is a great moment for all, right, so all you fans. You press. <laughs> Regardless, though, yeah. in the future, you won't yeah. have these freebies. Please sign up for the Patreon because in the future, including UFC 301, our prelims will be on the Patreon. Um, so consider this a nice little gift coming off of Alex's big win. Uh, we're going to have a great time covering this and future events on the Patreon. But uh, yeah, enjoy. So we have, and uh, uh, show my screen real quick. This is what the open bet sheet looks like. Um, you know, you got three tabs here. You got this tab with all my picks, and you got this tab with all of our picks listed out nice and neatly for you. Um, by the way, Yusuf, that was a typo. Alex did come back and say to me that he picked Lopez on the show. So um, we're gonna re have to review the tape. But he says he reviewed the tape, so I trust him. Um, got, this, these are Dan's picks. All his parlays listed out nice and neat. I don't know why he doesn't put how much he's betting in them, but I mean, you know, you can figure out what the odds. Because I'm embarrassed. Yeah, that's that's. I, I put the amounts in mine. I, I'm gonna I talk, I'm gonna talk to Dan and get him to do the same. But um, I'll do the same. I'll do, do the same. same. So you gotta put the amounts. The people are invested. They want to. And, and by the way, we have a big surprise for you. Sorry, we have a big, big surprise for you in year five. Uh, we're gonna be uh, doing something wholly different. It's gonna be really great. But get in the Patreon, support the show, get access to the open bet sheet where Alex won. So much money for everybody last week and the weeks prior, the week prior, and hit a perfect parlay and posted it in there in December. So, a lot of value in there. Get in there, all for fun. Entertainment purposes only, not financial advice. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I'm nothing. Nothing but. Hey, can we? Um, can we introduce? Idea. Can we introduce what we're gonna do for year five, right here, right now? Let's do it. Okay. So, do you want? Do you know it enough to introduce it? Do you want to introduce it? I will say that there will be a three-way competition myself. And be, yes, and there will be stakes attached. There will be stakes. It will be myself, Lukey CK, the Euro Under King. How this competition will be resolved, we will have each $1,000 put into the account. We will gamble with said money. Whoever can last with the longest or with the highest total for Mar or sorry May 9th of 2025. I'm correct at this point. Yeah. Highest amount, May 9th, 2025, with that initial one thousand dollar buy-in will be the official champion triple P triple P crowned. I am I missing anything? So we're going to put $1,000 into our accounts May 9th, and the, you're missing some key po points in this. Now, the purpose of this is to introduce stakes, one, but also to create sort of like a video game scenario where the money is our life points, and there's real consequences to hitting zero. So as you guys know, we started the, the podcast May 9th, 2020, when Tony Ferguson fought Justin Gaethje, when Justin did to Tony what Max did to Justin last, uh, last Saturday night. So... That was the first UFC card back during the pandemic. We had all been deprived of sports. We had all been deprived of UFC. Dan, Alex, we have a group chat. And I think it was Dan who was like, we should just have a, a Zoom call and just talk about the fights coming up. And then I was like, let's do it. Let, let's let's do it. And let's make it a podcast. So uh, we started the podcast. Perfect. Play for 
where we bet every single fight as a parlay and try to hit the perfect parlay. Now, we didn't watch any sports betting content. It looks like you guys are like doing stuff to each other. We both looked off screen at the same time. <laughs> uh, like you're whispering. It was, I really look like you guys were whispering about me. But <coughs> the goal of the perfect parlay for students is hit the perfect parlay. We never watched any gambling content. We didn't gamble on UFC before. Alex had a little bit, but we Dan had not. And for four years now, we've bet on every single fight, every single weekend. And we've all hit a perfect parlay. And along the way, you know, we've learned a lot. And what year five is going to represent is a graduation, a high school graduation. We did our freshman year. We did our sophomore year. We did our junior year. And this is our senior year. And now we're graduating. We're coming out to the world. And to me, it's about the concept of consolidation of knowledge. It's about the concept of viewing gambling as um, like if I can do it with one. Back to the original concept. We only would bet one bet on our perfect parlay, $10 bet to pay whatever the perfect parlay was betting. You that lasted it. about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never once ever only put in one bet ever. And since the uh, start of the show, I was like, boys, instead of just going for 12 pick parlays, maybe you should do a three pick, a six pick, a five pick, which is what I do. And I win most and I win the most money and I have the best picks. So we uh, and we'll put in. 30,000 bets and none of them will win. 50 cents a pop, all moon shots. Shut up. So basically, uh, my idea was that we put $1,000 in the accounts. And whoever hits zero from that initial $1,000 deposit first is no longer allowed to bet on any UFC except their perfect parlay. Now, you can bet 10, 20, 30, 100. You can bet whatever you want on your perfect parlay. But it has to, the only bet you're allowed to make on the UFC, if you're the first one to lose $1,000 or the second one to lose $1,000, is your perfect parlay. And that that creates two things, right? A sense of urgency around making that $1,000 way bigger than 1000 and not even letting it get close to zero. A sense of urgency, um, a sense of respect, a sense of uh, frugalness, right? But then also it creates, if you are to lose, now you fucking have to hit a perfect parlay. Like, that's your opportunity. And, hey, that was the exact circumstance I was in when I hit mine. I lost a bunch of money the week before. I said, I'm not gambling uh, for for a bit. I'm going to take a little hiatus. I'm going to retire responsibly for a bit. But something in my head told me, if I don't put in my perfect parlay this week, it's going to be the week it's going to hit. And I had a free bet in, in DK. Old trusty DK with a five ten dollar free bet threw it on my perfect parlay, ended up winning, made all my money back, and then some to have a little bit of a bankroll to keep playing. Real quick, um, as far as the rules of engagement, okay, cash outs. I was just thinking that we had not discussed cash outs. If you hit zero and you um, can only bet on your perfect parlay. I think no hedge outs, meaning you can't make another bet. Can't hedge, yeah. But I think cash outs. It seems like a loophole because then if you just like, if it, what if they offer you thirty bucks, you can cash out. And now you have thirty in your account, and you can start building back up from there. Is that what you're kind of right. thinking? <clears throat> no, you only get back in if you hit a perfect parlay. That's how you get your life back. I think, that's, I think that's more fun. Dude, but you can cash out. You can cash like, out. Hey. If we you, do that, you can cash out and take your money and go home. But if all three of us get out, we can bet it however much we want as soon as you know all three of us get out, or as soon as two people no, get no, out. No, no, no. When all, if all three of us, if all three of us lose a thousand dollars and don't, then or you know, or all our money, like we all can only bet the perfect parlay. Like that's it's still the whole year. This is the whole year. Like buckle in, you have to not want to do it. That's part of what this is. Uh, <laughs> I can't only bet a thousand dollars in a year. That that's just impossible. That's why you have to win to build your pile up. It's more. But but what? listen, Luke, l- let me just be frank with you guys. <laughs> let me just be frank with you guys. I was in the hole a, a, a decent amount of money <clears throat> if you looked at my statements, right? <laughs> like if you if you take the statements into consideration, which I think there's some type of weird math going on there, because it can't possibly be right. 
Tricky <laughs> <laughs> accounting on behalf of the sports books. And I appreciate it because that means less taxes for me. If you're say if you're telling me I'm a loser and I feel like a winner every day, you know, <laughs> like go so, ahead. So Hold on, let me let me just you know uh, banter a little bit. I, I'm going to take a look at my statements. So <laughs> I'm going to. The, the, the thing that I want most of all, though, is not to just have there be punishment for the losers, but rewards to reap for the winner. So I want the person, and you guys can comment in the chat. We still have till May 9th to decide this, but comment in the chat if you agree with this. I want the winner to get everyone else's money, whatever's left. That's no. <laughs> so Dan's reason for this is like, I I, th- I don't know what he thinks. Like, does he think like I'm going to have 20,000 and he's going to have 15 and I'm going to take all 15 from him? Like, that's such a champagne problem, Dan. That's such a champagne problem. You know what I mean? Like, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, you know? When I'm sitting there with my 20 and you have your 15, how exciting would that be for the audience? So, I, I mean, I, I think that, like, we just cross that bridge when we get to it. And would you be that mad if I had – You're to not it? crossing the bridge when you get to it. You're I'm declaring just, it now. No, no, no. So that's the opposite of crossing, crossing the bridge when you get to it. I, I think You're that, saying, no, let's establish the rule now, I not think it's cross about. the bridge when we get to it. Quick question. <laughs> Is this based on deposits and withdrawals? Alex, or is this based... right now. I'm not doing this right now. Because... <laughs> is this based on wages? It's basically the same as a court of law. And in a court of law, you don't ask the questions you don't already know the answer to because then you could end up walking ass backwards into some very embarrassing situations for yourself. So why don't you get organized and then come to us with some data and we'll not do it live on the show because what if, you, what if you're down $100,000? How good would that be for the show? Pretty bad. So unless you're willing to report right now that you are in the black. Lifetime, lifetime. I am up a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so great. You went, you're in the 1%. 1% club. Uh, I have bet $113,000 and I'm up 113200 <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And you don't even, and you're drunk half the time. And you're <laughs> like not scientific at all about it. But really. this year, this year we're up. And you, but think about this. But you listen, also bet on college basketball, football. You didn't win a penny in the NFL. You <laughs> so like I won on the on Chiefs UFC, Super Bowl. You're probably profitable on UFC. Which I won on the biggest game. I win in the biggest games. I win in the biggest fights. I always know who's going to win the biggest show. Nobody knows the biggest show better than the Euro Under King. I should be. I, I should be named the Big Show King. Honestly. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. I love that you're profitable, and now you can build it all on top of that and gamble responsibly. But, but I had to go up two point six thousand dollars this year to be up two hundred dollars or one hundred and twenty five dollars lifetime. So just just shows you. It's neither here nor there, really, if you think about it. And a lot of what you're, you're saying, saying, a lot of what you're betting and losing are gambling winnings, right? So it's like you put a hundred dollars in, you win a thousand, you lose that thousand. You only lost a hundred dollars out of your check. I think it's account. based on withdrawals and deposits. But the yeah. the the you're total bets, rolling it, you're leaving it in. And the then total bets, the hundred and thirteen thousand. that as your losses too. Yeah. <laughs> the hundred and thirteen thousand is certainly not out of my bank account. You've never had that. <laughs> like that's what I'm trying to say. Like you haven't had a fraction of that in your bank account ever. So it can't. Like the t- the time isn't there. So it has to be you losing winnings as well. You know what I mean? You losing. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Which is part of the fun. So anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is. You're alive. You're in the sport. You're in the you're in the game. Um, my theory now is uh, I want to create a headache for you guys. I want to make you guys not want to do this to some degree. And I also want to create real world anxiety for Dan around like him needing to have more money than us because he does kind of know he doesn't want to lose it, right? And you know, I think that the yeah, winner, not. I think the winner will do something very classy, like maybe like you know, let, let's create two couple scenarios. Okay, scenario A. Like Alex is $113,000 over the course of five or six years. I mean, you're only 27, so it's one hundred and thirty six years. Six years, exactly. Let's see what the average is. It's definitely spiked up. It didn't start out you know, at the average. So $113,000 divided by six. So that's not that bad. That's $18,800 a year <laughs> divided by 12 months. It's $1,569 a month divided by four weeks in a month, four weekends. That's 400 bucks, 392, 36, 392 a weekend. Guys, drink that. Now think about this. If you're out there judging Alex, do the math on Buffalo Wild Wings. You go with your girl. She gets the margarita. You get the tower. She gets the uh, 
garlic parmesan. You know, it's, like, how much are you spending on? And it's not just the B dubs, right? You go to brunch with your girl and her friends. 80 bucks easy right there. You and her, 80 bucks in and out the door, 80 bucks easy. Good day if it's 80. It's more like 120. That's a third. That's, that's right there. Then you got the night, Saturday night. If you're if you're like cooler than me, you know you're spending more than 392 on Saturday night. Um, but I'm just saying the Saturday, the Saturday night, the Sunday brunch, the gas, all things considered, people who don't stay at home on Saturday night and bet on UFC and just spend a weekend trying to find wanderlust and like go to fucking and if, if you if you boil down to how much i've actually deposited it's actually a fraction of that monthly it's like six hundred dollars a month over the span of the past six years so you need to so do the math on that <laughs> you gotta you gotta bet on less you gotta withdraw more you gotta well actually you, know, you gotta keep doing exactly what you're doing um, yeah because i'm profitable and i don't need to listen to anybody yeah <laughs> You should actually. If you're I I have gambled with one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars and lived to tell the tale. I am. That's actually so one percent. One percent of one percent ROI. One percent of one percent ROI. But like I said, if you're watching this show, going, why do I watch this show? It's like Alex bets on everything from basketball to fucking football to college. All I went on is MMA. <laughs> All I went on is MMA. <laughs> I lose every other bet I place. Never really. It's mathematically impossible for the UFC not to be your best sport in all this. Make, you know what I mean? Because I know for a fact you have you always lose on everything else, pretty much. Yes, I every single every oh, single NFL Sunday I will send Luke seven same game parlays that are one leg off that I bet fifty dollars on a pop or whatever. And I'm like, if you bet, and it's always props. I'm like, if you just had bet on that one guy to be a touchdown scorer, it would have been like. $70 profit on your 50. That's not a bad day. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, sure, you wouldn't have won 550, but you'd have won money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a big game. I'm a big game hunter. So I think big the message hunter. here is we're not doing the rest of the card. We just wasted all that time telling everybody about the thing. It's eight o'clock now. We got to go. Um, but we will be back next week. I know I promised it. I know I did promise it, but we just ran out of time, guys. We ran out of time. But um, we're liars. I'll uh, we lie all the time. I'll put the part of me promising on the beginning, but. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you like the strategy. Thousand dollars in on everybody. Those are your life points. I, Alex can bet on hockey. He can bet on basketball. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. But he's if he's gonna do that, then he's gotta fucking keep track of what he's betting on UFC in a spreadsheet where we can all see and hold it to account. That's right. Um, but that being said, I'm only gonna put a thousand in, and I'm only gonna bet on UFC, and I'm gonna watch it as if it's my character's health points in a video game, and I'm going to view that thousand as this is where I'm starting in the video game. And I need to get my health bar to grow, to be big and strong, like an Elden Ring. And then I can't be this little health bar. I have to be big and strong. So I'm going to get it big and strong. And I just have a weird feeling I chase losses the first week. And I have a weird thousand. feeling I bet a thousand, all thousand on one fight at the first. <laughs> <laughs> I have a weird feeling I'm going to do that. I have a weird feeling I'm going to do that. If Alex Pierre is fighting that weekend, I guarantee I do that. <laughs> I, I can guarantee. I can't I see a world where I don't make a gigantic bet on the first card of the new year i can't see a world <laughs> so i may be pinching pennies in the bathroom stall with billy walters to to figure something out after that but i think um we got to figure something out about the hedge outs i agree with you dan because if if you're looking at a fifteen thousand dollar hedge out nine fights into an 11 fight parlay and it's going to pay you seventy thousand it makes it messy grand, that's a little tempting you know what i mean to just pull it out especially if you don't know what's going to happen in the last two and you're staring at a fifteen thousand dollar cash out um I think if you cash out, you can buy. How about this? If you cash out, it has to be for above a thousand, and you're allowed to then reset the thousand. I think that's pretty fair. You're not allowed because no. you know, that covers you if you have some 10k cash out offer, which is why I know what you're thinking. Like, like if you have some life changing buy a car money that you see in your cash out, you can take that, and then you, the, your reward is that you can now buy back in with your thousand, but you have to buy back in. And then if you cash out for 1500, you have to put a thousand back in. So you only get the 500. That's kind of the punishment for being a pussy with a lower cash out. And then it's the insurance against not having to risk a higher cash out. That's kind of what you want, right? <clears throat> so our first, money. our first card, our first card that's eligible will be May 11th in St. Louis main event. As of now, as of now, it's going to be Derek Lewis versus Rodrigo Nascimento. More importantly, on the card, we have Chase Hooper versus uh, Vyacheslav Borshev. Buckley might get added to this card 
in his hometown. So I, I, I was praying to God you were saying Chase Hooper versus Joaquin Buckley. Like no, that would have no, been no, my no. dream come true. No, 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 no. <laughs> but still, I mean, Chase I don't Hooper want to give any. Uh, Joaquin Buckley. <laughs> I put a thousand on Buckley at pick them odds. I'm like, this is the <laughs> he's gonna bounce Chase Hooper head against the canvas. Chase Hooper goes out there, front kicks him in the face, catches him in some fucking Ezekiel joke, and is like, ah. <laughs> we also have a foe, a foe of the show. We have Terrence McKinney. Okay. Um, we got anything else that really sticks out? Not really. However, Derek Lewis won me my first perfect parlay. So there's a lot of significance on this card, which I like for our, uh, you know, our blast off point for, uh, you know, May 9th and, and forward. What May do you guys 11th, think? St. Louis, it's going down. What do you guys think about the announcements at the, uh, Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler's finally, finally in writing. Yeah, I think Love it. That, uh, great. it's going to be good. I think, you know, whenever McGregor fights, it's kind of like a holiday. You got to, you know, you're going to, for UFC fans, it's a holiday because you're going to, it, it, think about this, right? Our favorite sport is famous for a day when Conor McGregor fights. Your uncle, your aunt, anywhere you go, people are going to be interested in watching it. You have a, you, no matter where you are, you can be like, yo, the McGregor fights. Are you supposed to see the McGregor fight? And no one's going to argue with you. No, it, it's kind of like, oh, offices are closed today. The McGregor fight's on. You know what I mean? That's, so that's what I like about it. I like that it's, you know, am I, have I been chomping at the bit to see McGregor fight? Life goes on. Like I said, the UFC is built off the Yearies, the Alex Pereiras, the, the yes men, the ones who show up and work hard, you know, um, but it's not built off the guys who don't fight. No offense, but it's built. And you it's liked Roadhouse. Built, but it's not continued. I loved Roadhouse. I loved, I mean, I hated it. I was terrible. It was a pile of dog shit, but I enjoyed <laughs> parts of it. I enjoyed laughing at it. You know, with Roadhouse, there's so many things wrong with it. So many things wrong with it. But um, not enough McGregor. That's what I've heard. Not enough McGregor. Um, I think everybody said everything you need to say about Roadhouse. I mean, if you want, if you want to comment, if you want the opinion about Roadhouse. Well, uh, oh, Paulo Costa versus Sean Strickland. Yeah, bad fight for Strickland. I think I think Paulo Costa wins that. I think Paulo Costa wins that too, and I think we'll get a great value on him because Robert Whitaker. I think he beat Robert Whitaker, and people are going to devalue him. And they're gonna <laughs> Strickland, they're gonna say Strickland's got the. Uh, it'll probably be a pick'em. Probably like a pick them with Sean. I would line it minus one twenty Costa plus one fifteen Sean. Worst fight announced: Dustin Poirier versus Islam Makachev. Dustin Poirier jumps five Marvel. guillotines, gets taken down five times, <laughs> gets rid now. If that's he even makes it that long, just so you know that guys, this that's what I'll be putting my thousand dollars on is Islam Makachev to submit Dustin Poirier. It's the easiest pick of my life. The reason being. Father Makachev, or Father Nurmagomedov, Father, Father's plan, Abdullah, Abdullah Nurmagomedov, Father's plan. He only, I think, ever attended a couple of Khabib's fights, and one of them was when they built the stadium for him, and he fought Dustin Poirier, and he really liked Dustin Poirier, and he respected him, and he thought he was a gentleman, and during the fight, you know, Khabib got him in the choke. Khabib said, I didn't want to break Justin's arm in front of his parents, so I switched to the choke. No, that was uh, Gaethje. Gaethje. Yeah, yeah, Gaethje. I didn't want to break Khabib's head. I didn't want to break Gaethje's arm in front of his parents. And then he chokes Dustin out. So these guys have an ethic, and they're good enough to have one in some of these matchups because Dustin Poirier is nowhere near competitive with guys from Dagestan in any category. And he was he's going to get mollywopped by Islam, but because Islam knows that Abdul Nurmagomedov is watching from the clouds, and he knows that he likes Dustin and was friendly towards Dustin. He's not going to, he's not going to cut his face, brother. He's not going to hurt his punch, his face. He's not going to disrespect him, but he's going to submit him. The gentle art. It is the easiest pick ever. It should be minus 500. It will be plus 100 or minus 110. And I will bet my whole thousand on that. That's what I will do. <laughs> unless, unless it's even worse. I mean, no, he will finish him. Though. Like because he respects him. And he respects his striking and his power. His lungs been knocked out before, and that'll be why it's more closely lined than it should be. Because people will be like, you know, Dustin, he's he's tough. And if he's in there, he's going to punch this long. He's going to get the boxing going. No, 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 no. He's going to get taken down almost instantly. Probably, like you said, probably going to jump guillotine. But that's my opinion. I think it's the easiest pick of the world. Me too. I'm with you there, or maybe I'm not. I don't want to give away my strategy for May 9th and forward. 
Guys, we'll be so, back next week. And your strategy is going to be 30 picks, 50 cents a pop. They're My strategy is going to be kicking your ass, Alex. Okay, enjoy <laughs> yeah. your, little, your little birthday, okay? You're young enough to enjoy birthdays, okay? Once you get 30 plus, birthdays don't matter. It's all about babies and memories. And you ain't got none of those. So guess what? It's going down. Neither do right. you. You have no babies and no memories. You can't even remember your I got name. a big announcement coming on the next pod. Oh, he's got, he better keep going. Nope. <laughs> got a few days. So, all right, let's get it going, guys. Uh, we Thank you for being here, everybody. It's a break week. We hope you enjoyed the show. This is kind of a more subdued episode than normal. We're all coming off that UFC 300 hangover. We want to give you a nice long recap. We wanted to also talk about the things coming in year five. Uh, let me know what you think about the plan. I think we should, I think first place should get everyone else's money. I think that's and I wanted to we no, 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 right, no, so no, 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 thousand dollars from the both of the losers. That's no! five, 500 a pop, 500 a pop. No, because then if you lose your thousand entirely and never win it back, and the year ends and you're down a thousand, and then you gotta give up. Well, Luke, if you thousand. win, that's more than likely going to be the case, and you're not going to get anything in return, regardless. Why are you scared then? Why are you scared? You guys, you guys have no confidence, like what. I'm saying that I at least want. Like, I hope Luke wins twenty thousand. I hope I win twenty one. I'm taking every fucking penny from him. That's no, I, I know that. Here's how it's going to be. I'm going to be the one at the top of the mountain with all the money, and you guys aren't going to win anything. And then you're going to be like, okay, well, yeah, we agreed that we give you what we won, and we didn't win anything, so you get nothing. Alex, if I have a thousand and two one, if I have twelve, if, if I go up and down, up and down like you with your hundred and thirteen thousand, if I go up and down all year long and I'm up to two thousand, I'm down to a thousand. You 3, wouldn't 000. know what it's like to be in the black. You if, wouldn't know what it's like. If I get there and I have 15, if, I, if you get there, that's the question. If you get there, because neither of you guys can even get in the black. But I sit and live in here. You know, I live that, in the black. I'm going to fucking pull out my phone and. Mr. I'm getting doxxed over here just because I don't want to just because I want to bury the lead. Maybe I want to want to say, hey, behind the Patreon paywall, I'll go through my little financial statement like Alex just did right there. And everybody can see this is value, Alex. I'm not trying to just blast out stuff for no reason. I'm blasting it out to get some Patreon Where do members. I want to look because if you have 113,000, how much do I have? <laughs> less, less. No, less. I, I, I got to stay focused. I'm like Justin Gaethje. I don't need to think about that. Less. You guys have been gambling a lot less than me. I remember the day I turned 21. I got a DraftKings $100 free bonus bet. What did I do? I put it on Tiger Woods to win the Masters. What happened? He won. I was addicted ever since. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Well, thanks for joining the show. Join the Patreon. Get the open bet sheet. Uh, that's where we do the prelims predictions every single uh, week. So, that's where you can get an extra episode of the show. And we really, you know, people think we started the Patreon for money. We started it to have a part of the show that isn't just on YouTube publicly so that we could really, so we could start talking about the flat earth and different conspiracies and things like that and not get demonetized because we started the show in 2020. You guys have to remember this. We couldn't even talk openly on YouTube about the pandemic during that time without them like literally taking the show off. Right. And then we, so we were like, let's start the Patreon. Then we can tell people, you know, all of, um, the great teachings of Ludwig von Mises. So get into the Patreon and uh, Hanato Moicano for president of America and uh, at least let him get on the SWAT team to shoot the bad guys. At least let him get on the SWAT team. The SWAT team? I want to shoot the bad guys. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, guys. We love you. I don't know what else to say. We'll do the prelims next week. We love you.